Good morning and welcome. A great reminder there of some of the action between Australia and Ireland when these, last, these two sides met last year. Welcome to this series between Australia and Ireland. The first test will cross shortly to Croke Park in Ireland. There's the Australian team getting ready for this match. Of course, Australia without Nathan Buckley, who was a star last year, and also Steve Silvani, who was one of the stars in goals. And the Australians will have to adjust to that. But uh, Ireland also without some of their top players who uh, had to play in the replay, a tie in the Gaelic grand final lap match replayed yesterday. So the Australians, Mark Rusciuto there, he talked about uh, the inspiration of the Olympics, Shane Woe Woden as well, in the preparation to this match. Well, let's have a look at some of the differences. Let's uh, remind ourselves of the rules of this match, a hybrid between Australian and Gaelic football. And some of the changes, of course, 15 players, also five on the bench, a rectangular field, 80 minutes of playing time. Now, the difference in the score, six points like Aussie rules if the ball goes through the post, but it has to go under the crossbar to get the full six points. As we move down, three points for an over where the ball just goes over the top of the crossbar and a behind is the same as in AFL. The goalkeeper is the only player who can dive on the ball and a player may only be tackled between the shoulder and the hips. They're the major rule differences. Now the key players, and uh, obviously it, it does favour the running players and the more flexible players for Australia, Scotty West, we saw him with Rowan Smith be important in the past, Akamanis, Craig Bradley, Shane Woe Woden, who might be the reserve goalkeeper, Andrew Calloway replacing uh, Steve Silvani in that regard. Now for Ireland, Peter Canavan, 29 year old, one of the legends of the Irish team, 10 years as a top player, he's a small forward, particularly dangerous around goal. Finbar Cullen, another 29 year old, a handy defender, Trevor Giles is the captain, of course Brian Steins, the brother of Jim, and Anthony Towhill, another fine player, he is the vice captain for Ireland. Down and turn to Craig Bradley. Bradley, well, would you believe he was playing back in 1984 and he's the vice captain here for Australia. He's now 37 and this is pictures back from 1984 when uh, these two sides... For a light truck. Get one built by a real truck company. Isuzu. Or you might not get real turbo power. So get a light truck that's a real truck. The new 2000 Isuzu N-Series. Finally, the wait is over. Album Light Years. There is old pop, there is new pop, and there is Kylie Minogue. Let the light years begin. Treat yourself to the most rewarding new police drama since the bill. Try not to frighten the public. Premieres Wednesday, 9.30 on 7. City Central, after Blue Heelers. Welcome back. It's Australia and Ireland. As you can see, the sun is shining as we prepare to go to Croke Park. And we welcome our commentators, fresh from the Olympics, the diving and the basketball and all the action there, Drew Morfitt. And with him, the coach of the Australian team from 1998, Lee Matthews. Good morning to you in Australia and welcome to a sunny Croke Park. It is magnificent to be here after our experience in London yesterday where it pelted with rain all day, not only with Lee Matthews but also with Dermot Early, who was a voice who joined us in Australia last year for a magnificent series. Good afternoon and welcome. Well, good afternoon, Drew, and yes, it does look like it's a fine sunny day here in Dublin. There's been a few uh, spits of rain about and that would actually favour the Irish... Uh, Guys, their soccer skills are pretty good if it's a wet ball, but uh, it looks like being a pretty fine day, very good conditions. Yes, it's uh, looking a ter terrific out there in the stadium. I think it will be a wonderful game. If it's half as good as what happened in Australia last year, then we'll be all very happy. And once again, you're a proud dad with young Dermot, number 10 for Ireland out there, playing again today. Yes, it's wonder to, wonderful to have him on the team, uh, very enthusiastic about it. The series has got lots of publicity here because of last year so we're looking forward to him playing well and Ireland and Australia playing well too. Well of course Ireland are missing a few players who played in the uh, replay of the All-Ireland final here yesterday 65,000 people at Croke Park yesterday so they're missing a few including uh, the names like Seamus Moynihan who was the best in Australia last year the goalkeeper Declan O'Keefe uh, Michael Donnellan, but the Australians are missing players of the calibre of Wayne Carey, Nathan Buckley, Stephen Silvani, who was our best over here in 98, so we've had to come up with Andy Kellaway as a goalkeeper. Yeah, that'll be a big, a lot of pressure on uh, on Andy. Stephen Silvani, uh, 
uh, as the goalkeeper in the uh, last couple of uh, series has just done an exceptional job. But so he's a first time in, in front of the goals, uh, Andrew. So it's going to be a pretty nervous day for him. I'm particularly sad that Nathan Buckley is not here because he, he was wonderful in the series that I have seen him playing right through. Whether he was here in Dublin or out in Australia, he was absolutely magnificent. Well, this is part of the great thing about international football. You get to play against another country. You line up and you hear your national anthem. And I'll never forget two years ago when Jim Steins sang both national <laughs> anthems while he was lining up for Australia. Dual citizenship, I think, yeah. Jimmy. Well, it's a thing that uh, we miss certainly in our game. And it's great for both countries. Stand by for the national anthems. going down the lines, firstly meeting the Irish team. And terrific thrill for the players to uh, be meeting the Prime Minister here in the anthems play. Absolutely, it's um, part of the pre-match uh, activity here always that either the President, if uh, she is attending uh, Her Excellency, President McAleese is out of the country at the moment, but uh, the Prime Minister, Bertie Ahern, uh, a great fan of sport, and uh, particularly of sport in Dublin, is... Uh, talking to the players and I'm sure that it's a great thrill for them but it's a great thrill for him too to meet these terrific athletes. Has he doubled up this weekend here yesterday too was he? Yes he was <laughs> and uh, enjoyed it very much as a neutral I think yesterday which is <laughs> Dublin not involved. Uh, it can be one eye today we'll, we'll allow him that today. <laughs> Yes, you can never depend on sport, can you, Drew? Of course, the all Island final was played yesterday, as you mentioned, but it was a replay. It was uh, played uh, Dermot two weeks ago, but uh, it was a draw, so it had to be replayed yesterday, which I guess was the concern would be how would it affect uh, the ability of the same people, I guess, generally speaking, to get there Saturday and Sunday. Yes, we had a, a huge build-up to this particular series and the dates, the 8th and 15th of October, were flagged a long time ago. So they were finding it difficult to find a date for the replay and for the first time ever, the replay was on a Saturday. Great moment here for James Hurd to go down the line with the uh, Prime Minister to introduce the Australian players. So uh, James has had a big year, hasn't he? Uh, captain yes. of the Premiership side, we thought he was probably gone. He's come back, all Australian, captain of the Australian team on tour in Ireland. What a year for James Hurd. Yeah, a long way from, uh, I guess, the dark days, maybe 18 months only ago when he maybe thought his career was in jeopardy. And uh, as you said, come back, captain of the Premiership side and now captain the Australian side on, uh, on foreign soil. Can't get a much bigger thrill than that, I would think. And if Australia just happened to uh, win this series this year, it would uh, fill the trophy cabinet a bit for James Hurd. He's had a huge year. Mm, it has. Yes, it is. The, uh, wearing the coat of arms the, when we had the pleasure for the first time for many years of coming over with a group a couple of years ago, wearing the coat of arms on the outfit. It just is an enormous buzz. Dermot, one thing we notice here is the, the crowd turns up late. Now, I've heard that you're expecting something like about 35,000 here today, but when the game gets underway, there'll be about 15. Yes, that's a big problem here, and we've experienced it before that they try and rush in the gates just at the last moment. But I think, unfortunately, yesterday's replay will have an effect on the attendance. I expected it to be to 50,000 probably, but if we have 35,000 to 40 here, I'd be very happy. That'd be good. Mind you, the crowds in Australia last year were a surprise as well. I think the AFL bargained on about 40,000 at the MCG, so the 65 was a hell of a bonus. Fantastic night's entertainment it was, and uh, we see the pageantry that precedes uh, the games here at Croke Park when the two teams do walk the lap of honour, or the lap, I guess I don't know whether it's called a lap of honour, but certainly a lap of recognition pre-game. Absolutely, that's what it is. The fans want to see the players close up and uh, get a look, see how big, how heavy, how athletic they are and do a little comparison between the numbers on one side of the parade and the other. Not a bad idea. 
And it's when you look at the two sides virtually walking uh, side by side, uh, yeah, probably the Irish uh, team as a whole are just that little bit bigger, a little bit taller than, uh, than maybe the Australians. Yes, I think that um, looking at the Australian setup and the selection that has come over this year, I think it is probably a little more athletic, more runners in your lineup than uh, last year. And we have gone for a little bit of height because yeah. we have had to contest with you. Yeah, that's certainly the, uh, I think, the selection principles. Uh, obviously, the All-Australian side forms the uh, basis of uh, our Australian international rules team. But uh, where all Australian players are unavailable, it's certainly speed and agility are more the quality of player that is uh, being selected as opposed to height and strength. Well, an example of that is the All-Australian ruckman Stephen King didn't find his way into this team and he's an yes. emergency today. Along with uh, Luke Power and Simon Goodwin, they are the emergencies for Australia today. Very little ruck work, of course, where after the uh, six-pointers at the start of the quarters, the ball is thrown up in the centre of the ground, but there's no boundary throw-ins. Uh, there's no uh, sort of round-the-ground ball-ups, really, so uh, there isn't an enormous role for the uh, for the very tall ruckman in this type of football. Craig Bradley came over here in 1984, and here he is back again to be 37 next month what a career for craig bradley a lot of these players have experienced the game before either in australia last year and or in ireland here two years ago but some for the first time and it'll be a little bit of a foreign game to them with the round ball especially yeah. somebody like andy kellaway yeah we just don't have any position in our game anything like a goal kick well the 26 man squad that came over there's only 10 of them that have represented as senior australia at international rules uh, because the australian under 17 team now annually have a series against the irish under 17s so uh, quite a few of them have probably played uh, in those uh, uh, some stage earlier in the 90s but uh, certainly they adapt pretty well to the round ball uh, skills and uh, I, th I know the Australian coaching panel have actually been very pleased with the way the Australian players have been able to kick uh, the round ball uh, with a lot more control than maybe the previous uh, couple of series that we've seen. Well, this crowd has absolutely loved this parade just before the game. Whereas you uh, explained to them that they get a chance to have a look at the size of the players, match them up, check the program, numbers against what the guys look like. So they settle back into their seats and they feel as though they know the players a bit better than they did 10 minutes ago. You mentioned the goalkeeping skills. I thought last year when um, Australia were under pressure a few times to kick the ball away when playing out of goal. I think that's very crucial and it helped Ireland on a number of occasions. with the Australian National Anthem. He brings the crowd to its feet with the Irish national anthem. Well done to Paul. Terrific atmosphere building up. And just a few minutes ago, I thought it might only be 15,000 for the start. But I think it's built up even since we've been on air. 
Yes, they're beginning to come in. I noticed out at the back of the stand before the game started, there were quite a number of people wait, waiting out there talking about the game. And of course, at the last minute, they'll filter in. And uh, like yesterday in the replay of the All-Ireland final, it took the crowd a while to get into just about the throw up. There was quite a lot of vacant seats. So I expect it to fill up in the next uh, five or ten minutes. Pat McEnemy, the uh, local referee in charge. Brett Allen from Australia. Brett Allen there on the right. We don't see our umpires wearing a red shirt too often, but there he goes. Two players from each side in midfield to contest the opening tip-off. And a shake of hands between opponents before we go to it. it goes pretty quick, this. It's just blow the whistle off. Trent Crowe for Australia. Scott West in support. And Crowe's taken to ground. Ireland nearly win the football. West got a hand to it, but now Steins for Ireland gets a touch, and they lost some ground to gain possession and now move forward Ireland. This looks promising. Steins again keeps it low for Canavan. He's been a dangerous player, and well, he's taken out of it without the ball. And Jason Ackermanis has been given the job on Canavan, and he's hurt him in the opening minute. Canavan not too good. It's a big job, that, uh, Peter Canavan. Uh, he's a very small forward, but very, very dangerous player. But he, he, his great ability is to turn very, very quickly, very close quarters. And Jason Ackermanis has that kind of ability. And the blood rule might be invoked very early. Well, I'm not sure if there is a blood rule in these international rules. Well, he's a dangerous player and uh, clearly a marked man and the Australian didn't take long. Yes, yes, there must be a blood rule because he's leaving the field. Absolutely, and the interesting thing about Canavan is that when the selection was made uh, two weeks ago, he wasn't on the first uh, 24 players. He wasn't? Yeah. No, and because of the final yesterday, six of the players, uh, three from Galway and three from Kerry, are not involved, so he was brought back in and, of course, he has a terrific uh, ability to turn and great speed. Well, that second test that Ireland won last year, Canavan was the top scorer with 16, and there's something going on here off the ball, and uh, Trent Crowe getting involved. So this game has started in fiery fashion. Well, it was a highlight of some of the games played uh, early on before it became officially sanctioned by the GAA and the AFL, and uh, some of those games in the mid-80s were absolute wars. But uh, there's been great spirit, in the four official test matches played home and away in the last two years but there's a bit of aggro and i have to say started by the australians right in the first minute just take a long time to get the ball play free started we have been uh, sitting here watching this for the best part of a minute i would have thought and drew is absolutely right i can remember a couple of good donny brooks out here in the years <laughs> gone by <laughs> so ireland hoisting the ball high for a score to set up it's away to the right-hand side. There is no score. And it'll be an Australian ball. Andrew Kellaway. There's the bench. Eight players on the bench. 15 on the field at any one time. And eight interchange. And uh, they work the interchange bench pretty regularly. You were worked overtime, Lee, when you were coaching the Australian side. Yes, yeah, a lot of running for the midfielders. So the Australians will certainly be trying to rotate their mid. I think they'll try and keep possession. Try not to uh, kick the ball too long too quickly but try and run the ball forward as opposed to kicking it forward here's a chance for the Australians now with West having a ping but it comes up short and into the arms of Sullivan Cormac Sullivan the goalkeeper for Ireland in the absence of their star goalkeeper resting after yesterday's replay Declan O'Keefe Ireland bring the ball out of defense Brian Steins the brother of Jim Steins who was also in Australia playing with Melbourne and the mark taken just forward of halfway the mark to uh, Graham Garrity. No score in the game as yet. Kick by Garrity is handy. Oh, the ball was dropped down there. A big chance there for Larry Riley, but he couldn't take it cleanly. Here's James Hurd, the Australian captain. Always oh, seems to have so much time, and he can kick the round ball. Look at that straight as an arrow. But he did kick it, act, in fact, too long. Yeah, I think they're just the at the moment, uh, early in the game, they haven't settled down yet, but... Uh... I, I think they wouldn't, Australia don't really want a hurt, so to be kicking the ball long into the forward line. Obviously, you're always one man short because the goalkeeper is always back there for the opposition. Kick by Giles. Look, dangerous there for a moment for Sullivan. He got there in time. 
See, the Irish kick uh, about a 25-metre job, maybe 30. And the little top spitter that really just loses just loses uh, its flight, the ball in flight. So he's not trying to kick the ball a long way. Crow's got it going Australia's way here. Gets it to Hurd. Crow in support. Hurd concedes a little bit of ground. Carousella back to his club and Australian captain. Carousella wasn't ready for the return ball and they've lost it. They might have just regained it there. Johnson back to Hurd. A high ball going nowhere. All Ireland here. Giles takes it. The captain of Ireland, an absolute superstar in the game, puts it wide to Steins. Kicked by Steins. Didn't go for distance again, but it's not to the advantage of the forwards. Ackermanis on the up to Johnson. Kicked by Johnson with distance. McLeod works to the front. Didn't take clean possession. Didn't try to. Ball was taken there by Sexton. And he takes it back, thrown to the ground. Giles off the ground. Brilliant football. That's when you... It's better not to take possession sometimes. Move it on, and Giles did it brilliantly. Look at the bodywork. And Ireland came out on top. Damien Hardwick was put straight on the turf. We don't see that too often. <laughs> Now one thing you do know is the when the ball's on the ground, the soccer skills of the uh, of the Irish players, that is one part of the game they certainly need the ascendancy. I think that in your game, you put the hands down to get the ball and kind of steady it. We would tap it with the foot, so the yeah. advantage is definitely with the Irish there. Bird takes the free. Over halfway it goes. Carousella is there. And also number 13, Adam Uze. Uze has a race on for the ball. And Ireland keep the ball at the toe, which is good play. The Australians might learn this eventually. Ackermanis, you're in trouble. Dropped it in the tackle. The Irish loved it. The little toe poke forward. West gets back. He's buried. The Irish can tackle. It's not part of their game, but have they learned it? Yeah, they've worked on it quite a bit now in the last uh, couple of weeks that they've been together, and that's one of the things that's important. I think we were caught a few times last year in Australia, so that's one of the things they learned. Well, the ground of buzz. They haven't bothered to score as yet, and we've been playing quite a while with no score. It's unusual in this brand of international rules football. This is Giles in midfield. It's interesting at the moment, uh, Michael O'Loughlin and Andrew McLeod are playing as the two pronged full forward line for the Australians. They're staying back fairly deep, and their Irish uh, full back line players are tending to lead them to the ball early in the game. Chance for Ireland as they move it forward. Surely we're going to get the first score out of this. And over the top for a three-pointer, it comes from Cullen. Well done, Finbar Cullen. Nicely gathered there and as he came forward. Left foot, well done. So three points over the crossbar. Six points into the net and one point either side. The first score of the game took a long, long time coming. Johnson corner, so he goes back. Well, I think they got a whole possession there, Drew. Uh, again, it was a long kick forward by, uh, by Smith, but I think they're just going to try and hold possession. That's their plan pre-game, the Australians. But under pressure, we need to see whether they can stick to that. Dermot Early there, getting back into the back line. Cullen, the scorer. Sent it to Whelan. Whelan shows a clean pair of heels. Puts it out wide. The dive unsuccessful. But Ireland a big chance here. Oh, here's a six goal coming up. They've got to go for the six-pointer here. Oh, well, well done, Andrew taken Pellaway. straight at the goalkeeper. And Garrity could have done better with that. Would have been disappointed, Dermot. I would have thought he didn't get a six-pointer out of that opportunity. Well, I think he should have moved the ball on to the player who was inside him and rather than carry it himself. And he went too close to the goalkeeper. Well done to uh, Callaway. Good stop. Unusual role. There's Dermot Brereton. Dermot Brereton. How appropriate is a name like that coaching Australia in Ireland. Here's a chance for a score now for Ireland. Overrun by the Australians in defence. But the ball's still there. And eventually West clears for the Australians. Dipper down on the boundary line. Heart in your mouth a moment ago. There's no doubt those, uh, there was two six-point opportunities uh, that have gone begging for Ireland. So very, very good defence by Australians. A great tackle in the last one when Dermot caught the ball high in the air and had a chance. He should have held the ball and taken a three-point, but going for the goal, it was a great tackle. This is Jared Cavlin right in front, and he'll be looking to put this over the crossbar for another three-pointer to Ireland. His approach is good. The kick is good. So Ireland leading six points to nil. 
after their two three-pointers. Akamanis comes out wide. Woe Woden started on the bench. James Hurd has gone to the bench with Bradley, so they're rotating pretty quickly, the Australians. And that ball off the side of the boot and going out. Dipper. They've had a few chances, Ireland. He's right in front of me. He's got the microphone to his lips, but I can't hear him. <laughs> we're, work yeah. we're working on a dip. Beautiful conditions. A bit of a chill wind, but a beautiful sunny day in Dublin. The goalkeeper off his line to create the extra man in defence. There's the uh, kick by Sullivan. Whack of Manus all over his opponent. No whistle on the play. Comes to West. Pokes it out wide to Rusciuto. The Australians moving forward here. West takes a clip round the ear but gets it to Crowd. Chance forward for the Australians. McLeod a chance. Only the goalkeeper to beat. Oh. A soccer shot by McLeod. Took a good goalkeeping stop that one. Took a good save. It's excellent. And pass this, comes over the top. This Kramer. is where the Australians get into trouble, Drew, when they get all their men forward and now all of a sudden Ireland surge forward with that extra number and they're so quick. A six-pointer, they do well to prevent a six-pointer here, the Australians. It's looking a big chance. Kick round the corner, over the bar for three. And that came from Garrity. So Ireland dominating at the moment and leading Australia 9-0 after a slow start. They've scored their three points in the last few minutes. Can Australia find a way home? Woe Woden, bring it out of defence. To Brent Harvey, who started on the interchange. Good to McLeod. David King didn't hear the tackler coming. Lost control of it. Another example where Ireland didn't take possession. They just towed the ball to a man in a better position. Dermot Early getting back there in defence. Very early in the game, uh, Australia might be just wondering about that full forward line setup of theirs. The McLeod A. Lockman is just not really working for them. They don't really look like creative scoring opportunities at present. That's true. Each ball that's gone in there has been knocked away from them. They haven't been able to hold on to it. Jared Healy on the match committee looking a little bit worried there on the terraces. Once again, another Australian forward thrust has come to nothing, and Ireland bringing the ball out of defence. 9 0 Ireland in the first quarter at Croke Park. In Bar Cullen. Go for it, Pete. Go for it, now McLeod has let his man get away from him and the mark taken by Rainbow. Yes, that's his name. This is Glenn Ryan. And we've got a man unmarked down towards the forward pocket. Now Crow picks him up. A lot of movement which you don't see on TV off the ball. They're really working hard to slip the defenders. And prepared to concede some ground. This is Rainbow. And a high shot for goal. Very high by Toehill. Offline. Got oh, good, good mark. mark. That is nearly the best mark we've seen in any of these test matches taken by Graham Garrity. Just read the flight of the round ball so much better. He just knew where it was going to fall. Absolutely. And uh, from behind the player, he was able to get one hand on it. I think he steadied with, with one and Jen just grabbed it with the other in a good position to take the score. And blocked by Lipic, the man on the mark. You might notice that the shot for goal by Garrett, he came straight out from the point where he took the mark, whereas in Australian football, he had gone back away from goal through a, an imaginary line. So actually, he was in a very good uh, scoring position. But the smother came from Lepich, the man on the mark. David King, just behind halfway. He's given it straight to the opposition. Or Ryan failed to take the mark, but has time to recover. Short pass, fingertip control with the glove, and Ireland moving forward. Giles contests with uh, his teammate Ryan for the ball. They've lost it. James Hurd only a brief spell on the bench, and the soccer out of defence sets Ireland up here brilliantly. To Trevor Giles, the skipper. He works again. the ball forward. Whelan. And Whelan can run right at the defence and put it into goal. Callaway punches clear. But still a chance for Ireland. The shot comes back for three or one. The one. Just the one pointer to Kavlin. But it's 10 nil in favour. Actually, they've given it three. And Michael O'Loughlin uh, down in midfield. Uh, looks like the stretcher is going out. Not quite sure what he's done, but he certainly looks in a bit of a discomfort. 
Now they've given that one a three, so it is 12 nil in favour of Ireland. Yeah, I thought that uh, I thought that it was um, signalled for for um, a one pointer, but uh, yeah. One of the things about the game is that um, the Irish players are moving all over the place and you have Cavlin there coming up to take that shot really he's a corner back a defender you know operating 20 or 30 yards from his own goal here he finds himself 30 yards from the opponent's goal so position is not uh, uh, being adhered to it's all over the place and uh, a high standard of fitness Kellaway to bring the ball back into play after the over was scored Michael O'Loughlin has hardly been in the play at all is now going off injured Justin Leppridge dashes out of defence has a bit of a fumble that might work for Australia's advantage. But Ireland off the ground, good. Levich attacked the ball, rather, uh, Ackermanis attacked the ball hard to Hurd. Bradley, Australia still looking for their first score. Rowan Smith. Kick smothered by Ryan. Comes back to Smith. Kick smothered by Ryan again. Replay of the first incident. Bradley with a little hand pass out towards the boundary line. It's a high tackle, no whistle on the play. West finding Johnson. It's uh, Rowan Smith, and he's barreled two to one. Uh, the physicality coming into the game. Dipper, there you going? No, not hearing. I won't be throwing to Dipper anymore. We'll work out the communications, but there's a bit going on on the field. 15. Uh... Michael O'Loughlin not, not, not looking too good, sitting on the boundary. And this will be a shot here for Rowan Smith. He'll have a shot for the over, for the three-pointer, and Australia's first score. Well, there's a lot of pressure built up until you can get that first score on the board. So this is very important for the morale of the Australians. He's got it. First score for Australia, and it's taken quite some time, just four and a half minutes to quarter time. Well, it was a game in Australia last year where Ireland was 17-0, but Australia came back pretty well. So, uh, there's still plenty to go in this game. Oh, here's a mistake by Ireland. The player didn't see, didn't expect the pass coming. He had his back to it. I think that the uh, umpire behind the goal has called the attention of the referee out in the field that something happened on the goal line and perhaps he's giving a point to Australia. Yeah. Yep, that, yes, that probably was over the line and it has been given a point. So the goalkeeper, Sullivan, handled the ball but just behind the line. So it's now 12-4 in favour of Ireland. West has it to Hurd. McLeod has apparently been brilliant in training in a lead-up game that was played against Dublin the other night. Ball chipped back to Sullivan, and the keeper has it. Fine sunny conditions. James Hurd comes to the bench for the second time already. Wayne Campbell comes on. Working it out of defence, this is McCrane. The speed down the touchline. And the unerring kick as straight as an arrow right down the line, and eventually finishes up out of bounds. Heard has had a couple of workouts and was prominent right in the play, but twice he's gone to the interchange bench. Oh, this is midfield dangerous. Cavlin has it. This crowd has really built up. Terrific crowd now at Croke Park. Reverse the decision. High tackle on uh, Justin Lepic, so he's got the uh, free. So Ackermanis, you can hear the Australians from uh, the coaching on the sideline, run it, run it, link up. But unfortunately, the last kick was off the side of the boot and let the forwards down. Darren Fay, centre half back for Ireland. Outstanding defender. And just working the ball around and uh, kicks of about 25 metres seem to be the order of the day. There is a ball put out of bounds on halfway. McGrain couldn't quite get there, and it will be an Australian ball. To be taken by Blumfield, who's just off the interchange. The attempted spoil from behind was uh, nowhere near the mark. 
Harvey attacked the ball hard and went straight yeah. over his head. Number now great chance for the Islanders. What an opportunity this is. They balked on the old one too. And now the intercept by Shane Woe Woden. Well, I'm not too sure how Ireland messed that up. Now Australia have some numbers. Johnson to West, but his hand pass wasn't too good with the round ball. It was chopped off there by Sexton. And now Ireland to clear. Fay across the ground. In a lot of space now is McManaman. Can the Australians get back in defence? McManaman to take it to them. In short, he goes. Cohill. Dispossessed in midfield. Crowed up from defence. McLeod one-on-one -on -one with his uh, man. Palms the ball down to Carousella. But he, Carousella beaten to it by his opponent. Sullivan in trouble. The keeper down, but Australia couldn't win possession. Now a chance for Harvey. Look at the speed and the interception by McManus. Fantastic. Now Australia have it again. Johnson pokes it high. Australia wanting a mark. Almost to McLeod. Carousella the flip out. Comes to West. Who gets a three-pointer? That's Brown. Nathan Brown. They've done a very good job here, I reckon, the Australians to be... Uh... Well, they uh, six points down. Uh, no, five points down, I think it is. Uh, because I think Ireland have had many more scoring opportunities, but they've just, uh, I reckon, really probably three or four three-pointers have gone begging. Absolutely. I think the one by Garrity, he should have taken more space. The last one by Riley, he should have gone for a shot. And then in that area of play, and that part of play there, they were very scrappy, and Australia were much more clever on the ball. Short pass out. Well, it worked out OK. It could have been dangerous. So Australia were down 12 nil earlier in the game. And they've scored two overs and a behind since then. So it's now 12 points to seven in favour of Ireland. Lepage just behind halfway. Rusciuto in support. High for Woe Woden, but he was good enough to control it. Prode. Very high ball. Not good for the forwards. McLeod almost. Andy McLeod gets the ball back. Shot by Blumfield. Is astray. Now, he wouldn't miss that with an Aussie rules ball, but he missed it with the round one. And no score. And there is the siren signalling quarter time here at Croke Park. Terrific display. And the crowd really warming to what they saw here in the first quarter. All Ireland early, and Australia came late. Yes, they certainly did. Uh, early in the uh, in that quarter, Ireland were just... Well, they, they controlled, I think, the whole quarter, really. But I think they'd be very disappointed to only have scored the 12... Uh, the 12 points uh, and Australia have managed the seven so I think Australians would be pretty happy with the way the game's gone to be only five points in arrears. I think Ireland will be disappointed with the amount of possession they had and the opportunities that they created that they didn't put two or three more three-pointers on the board and certainly they had the chance of one if not two six-pointers. On the other hand Australia worked very hard they didn't let those chances that um, were presented to Ireland on hinge them in any way and they came down the field and worked very hard to get back into the game there's nothing in it so the quarter time score here at croke park is ireland four overs for 12 points australia two overs one behind seven points a five point lead to ireland at quarter time Better Homes returns to Tuesdays with some hot tips. Add real value to your home. A local real estate agent has valued the improvements at over $10,000. And how to grow a bumper tomato crop. Tuesdays, 7.30 on Better Homes. Then at 8, three unique Aussie escapes from Melbourne's trendiest hotel to South Australia's Lost Jewel. It's just such a gorgeous place. And the way to really experience Tassie's wilderness. Woo! Oh, my God! The Great Outdoors, Tuesday at 8. Why leave your car at a workshop all day? Stay there. We come to you. At Lubemobile, we can service, tune and repair your car at home, work, office, anywhere that's convenient for you. With services from just $76. Observe all the work being done by your highly trained mechanic. So try Lubemobile today. Put it off no longer. Call 133032 and Lubemobile will come to you. Lube 
everyone's a winner with Harvey Norman's cashback offer. You can win up to $250 cashback on any purchase over $250 from our electrical department. Buy this LG 109-centimeter rear projection TV with bonus Hi-Fi VCR for $37.99. Or this huge LG stereo 132-centimeter model with Teletext. It's just $46.99 with a bonus DVD player for only $1. What a deal. Up to $250 cashback. Hurry, this offer won't last long. Conditions apply. See store for details. Laura Marks have researched and developed a new gel called Hair Free. It reduces unwanted hair growth and leaves the skin looking hairless permanently. Hair Free is not a harsh hair remover. It's a completely new approach to reducing hair growth. Each time you use Hair Free gel, regrowth is smaller, finer, softer and barely visible. After just three months, over 80% of people tested reported success and the results are permanent. Hair Free for body and facial hair is now available at leading pharmacies. Telstra Mobile Net presents John Farmer, Man of the Hour Tour. Don't miss the irrepressible John Farnham at the Entertainment Centre, performing all his hits, including songs from the new album, 33 and a Third. John Farnham Live, thanks to Telstra Mobile Net and Talent Works. Tickets on sound now. When do we have the bathroom renovated? Permont Bathrooms. We do the lot with no fuss, no mess, guaranteed from just $5,000. This is the only way I get to see my friend these days. She called intro line. She's either out or on the phone. What am I talking to you for? Intro line, the world's best fun meeting club. Call now. So it's quarter time and Australia trailing Ireland, Ireland 12, Australia 7. The two overs for Australia to Rowan Smith and Nathan Brown. Ireland probably having the better of that quarter. Let's go back to our commentators, Drew Morford, Lee Matthews and Dermot Early. Beautiful sunny conditions here since the start of the game and the crowd has really built up. Now we'll try Dipper down on the boundary line. He's been trying to work hard for us. Come on, mate. Good on you, Drew. Okay. How are you guys? All right? Good. Well, exciting first uh, quarter we saw there, but uh, as uh, as you mentioned there, Lee, um, Jermit was very happy in the last 12 minutes of that quarter. He, he just f felt the guys, felt their confidence. And the turnovers in the middle of the ground, the way they're kicking the ball, and because uh, down there, it's very, very breezy down here, and uh, so you expect the, uh, the Australians to hold the ball uh, much better this uh, second quarter. Thanks, Dip. Second quarter underway, and Ireland bringing the ball out of defence with a long kick. They seem to be able to kick it long and straight. Lepic, a good mark, backing into the pack. And quite a firm breeze going now in the Irish uh, direction. Irish are kicking, so they, they might decide to get a little bit more distance now as they come forward. Heard to Brown, and Brown a little centering kick to Smith. Hardwick up from defence. Could put Australia to advantage here. Took a solid knock over the uh, eyebrow there. Her tackling hard, dispossessing, and moving the ball over the boundary line and winning possession for the Australians because the ball came off Kavlin, who scored two overs in the first quarter. Kicked by Hurd. Here's a chance for Australia. Uze didn't give it enough. And it made it pretty simple for Sullivan. Now, once again, Ireland out of defence. And Hardwick marking the mark pretty hard. Faye up towards half forward. Good lead and the mark low down to Towhill. Anthony Towhill, experienced with Australian football in Australia. And he kicks it hard for his teammate out in the left forward pocket. It only just reached him, but it's pretty good here for Riley. He goes for the shot and off the upright, over for a three-pointer. Good kick by Riley, and of course, hitting the post, going over, counts for three here in your game. I think that counts for the lower score. It would be, but if it goes through, no matter how it gets through the uprights, it's a three-point if it's over. I like the rule. I think it applies in most other sports. Basketball, water polo, soccer, whatever you like. That's true. And if the ball was to hit the post and bounce back out into play, well, look at the kick in by the, goal, by, uh, the goalkeeper. Looked a little bit dangerous by Kellaway, but it found its man. No, I think if the ball hits the post, bounces back into play and is a live ball you can't imagine a more exciting situation than that <laughs> yeah it did right there hey, hey. 
Lepic. So 15 to 7 in favour of Ireland. Heard puts it high for the forwards. Now a chance. David King. McLeod shrugs a tackle. Well played, McLeod. Beats a couple of them. Puts the ball out wall. Oh, down you go, son. Good well, around there. And Brett Ratton didn't see it coming and hit the turf very hard. Oh, look at that kick. Absolute pinpoint. That was phenomenal. And Riley goes for a bit of a run. One on one forward. And it didn't quite reach the man uh, on the forward line for Ireland Daly. And fortunately for Australia, they got out of that one. Comes through Crowe. Out to Hardwick. And the Australians taking their time to set up. To Lepic, who'd left his man. Not a bad kick by Lepic. And a bit of room for Brown. Skims away from him, though. Deep out in the forward pocket. Back in front of goal. Uze is there. Ball punched away from him. And a great chance for Ireland to clear. Whistle's gone. Let's have a look at Brett Ratton going down. It was a bit of a hospital ball. It floated and bang. Trevor Giles, the Irish captain, cleaned him right up. Now, David King, after the free kick, kicking round the corner. You don't see a bloke do this too often with the... <laughs> And actually, he's kicked it dead straight and missed by miles. Yeah, he had to kick it with the uh, the inside inside of the instep and get the top spin onto the uh, round ball, but did not strike it very well at all. Uh, and look at the chance here for Ireland. The, the ball can be back in play so quickly, you have to react. Chance for Ireland now with McManus. Oh, quick movement of the ball, and the shot for the over is successful. That was Anthony Rainbow from Kildare who took that. And normally a half-back comes up every now and then and gets a score for Kildare from the half-back position. He's done well for Ireland today and a good three-pointer. Now heard for Australia. 18 points to seven. Well, all these games have been close the last four years. And the aggregate advantage in four games to Ireland is just 18 points. But already here they lead by 11 early in the second quarter. Australia, I think, gave themselves a very big chance of winning here today with uh, the absentees from the Irish squad because of the All-Ireland final replay yesterday. But so far, just taking a little bit of time to get used to the game. And, of course, shot by David King was just one of the forgettable things that's happened to the Australians so chance. far. A high tackle to Crow, so he's got a chance. He did it pretty well. Just offline. So Once again, uh, boys, the Australian uh, bench is using it, and uh, three or four plays change in, uh, every time. Ireland's just made it one change. So Crowe for just the one-pointer. 18 points to eight. Here come the Irish again. This is Towhill. That number two to one. He's beating them. Well played by Anthony Towhill. Well, Ackerman has played the man. Towhill still got it on the toe. This will be sensational. Well, what's he got out of it? He finished up getting a one-pointer, and I thought it might have been a six. Well, you would probably see that kind of skill in Old Trafford or at the Olympics and the soccer stadium and so on. Tohal did extraordinarily well there to keep the ball under control, but the finish probably let him down. Maybe a cutback would have been a better option. He did feel the clash with uh, Jason Ackermanis. So he's signalling from for some assistance, Tohill, but gee, it was great play. Here's Wayne Campbell. And the whistle's gone. There's a push there and an Irish free kick taken quickly. They can run it out of defence. Here comes Giles, the Irish captain. Puts the ball back in field to Ryan. And they're getting the ball in plenty of space early. And he can take it right up to the line. Early, took the shot pretty early, hit the post and went in for three. Well, he's learned a little bit. I think last year I criticised him in Australia when he didn't go far enough with the ball and kicked it for a one-pointer, I remember very distinctly. That was a little bit better, but he had to get the help of the ball. <laughs> I think the wing position uh, is being very important for uh, for Ireland at the moment. Uh, just to hold this position out there, not get sucked into the play, and just be there for the transfer out onto the wings. And I think Ireland are doing that just a bit better than the Australians. 
kick by Smith up to the forward line. The ball palmed down in the path here of Garacella. It works its way through the defenders, but Sullivan's going to be there. Irish goalkeeper plays on in a hurry and there's finds that a man. A wing out there. He just they're holding their position really well and giving the defence something to move to out wide. I think the Australians just have to try and uh, emulate that a little from their wing type players. Brian Stein's trying to dash onto this in the right forward pocket. He gets the ball into Garrity. Garrity might find Steins again. Instead of that, he puts it very high in the air. Marking chance for Ireland. In fact, it was Good a Mark fantastic Hardwick. mark by Hardwick. And this is where Australia, they've kept them space. They've been able to transfer. Let's see if they can take it through, through this uh, vacant wing position. Craig Bradley, Johnson running together. Brent Harvey in midfield. And he's got Wayne Campbell as well. Campbell still has to beat a man. Finds Uze across the ground to Carousella. Now, now. He's been very good through a training, the way he's been kicking the ball, so he'll go for the three-pointer here. Just go the set shot and kicking around the corner like David King in a similar position. Needs the instep, gets it. Great kick. Well done. Just skimmed off the upright through for three. So we've had, what, three posters in the game, and they've all gone through all, the uh, they're, high they're score. Through, yeah. <laughs> I think Australia trying to set players up to have shots at goal is still, you know, rather than necessarily having long shots, just trying to see if they can give players a 20, 30-metre shot. Gee, good mark. That's where they want to keep the ball to, Lee, in the hot spot, just yeah. in front of the, just on the 13-metre mark. 13-metre um, mark. They're having trouble dipper getting guys free there. That's their problem at this point. So the Australian... Uh, coaching staff to Emmett Brereton who coached the Australian side in Melbourne in Australia last year and Jim Stein's helping out Jim of course who knows everything about Gaelic football and one of the great success sporting stories in the world really becoming an Australian rules player chance for Australia here but they waited and it was an uncontested mark to Rainbow early and he's buried after he took the mark by Campbell shouldn't really expect that con that uh, contact. No, early. Deep back in defence. 22 to 11 in favour of Ireland. Midway through the second quarter. Early again. We tried to bounce around the defence. They've lost it. Carousella! And the shot by Carousella is offline. And through four behind. I think Australia were very disciplined there. They made sure that nobody was free, made it very difficult for the Irish player to get the ball away. And when he did, there was pressure on straight away. Good work by Australia. Irish bench. You players uh, would be uh, showing bruises already. Because we saw uh, blood in the first 30 seconds of the game. He's pro for Australia. Bringing Kellaway into the play. And it was almost an own goal. If that had beat the goalkeeper, that would have been six points to Ireland. Good heavens. Crowd had heart, heart palpitations and gave us heart palpitations as well. Ackermanis. Chance for Woe Woden to run onto it. Two Australians here with a show. Oh, brilliant play by Ireland. Don't take possession. Just work the ball to a teammate in a better position. Running it out of defence, Cullen. And down the outer wing, Ryan. Beautiful pass for Steins. Steins, the centering ball is good. On the skim, it comes through to Riley. He goes to ground. Steins with another chance. Working hard on him is Hardwick. And they take it all the way to the line. Now, have a look at Crowd here. Crowd goes backwards to the goalkeeper, and Callaway Ooh. saves it with a centimetre to spare. Oh, he's a six-pointer. Surely Ireland will get six here. Oh, missed off it. the crossbar. It was an open shot for goal. Kellaway beaten, and it hit the crossbar. Early goes for the three-pointer. And I think a way to the right for a behind. So one point to Dermot early. So a total for four for the game for him. An 11-point lead to Ireland, 23 to 12. Well, I think that Andrew Kellaway has worked very hard on his goalkeeping skills to kick that out, kick the ball out well and accurately. But certainly he was on top of his game to get back and take that one off the line. First class marks to Andrew Callaway for that excellent work. Bradley did well not to take possession again. Quinn, Seamus Quinn, number 26. 
And there was the shot for goal, which came off the crossbar. Marking attempt for Uze. Whistle's gone. And it's to be an Australian kick in a great position here for Adam Uze to go for a three-pointer. He's one player, once again, though, who's been kicking the ball very, very well. And the little practice game we had, uh, you know, kicking about nine points. So, see how he goes here. Good view of it from behind. Starts at left, and it stays left for a behind. Australia really have to make the most of those because most times, given Irishman that kick, and he just uh, get three every time. Yes, he would. And, uh, again, this surge through midfield, uh, the extra number that overlapped for Ireland, that puts the pressure on the Australians when this happens. And here's McManaman, and his shot for an over is a way to the right for a behind. And Kellaway <laughs> made sure that that was the decision made because he was waving it away too. Third marks low to the ground. Brad Johnson, you can hear the coaches. You've got time, Jono. Getting plenty of advice from the sideline. Brad Johnson takes it all away. Well, he went for the score and missed everything. Did everything right. Even did a solo run to himself on the way up there. One of the skills that we are so good at. He was able to do it well, but the finish was terrible. Six and a quarter minutes remaining to half time. Ireland 24 to Australia 13. In the first of the International Rules Test Matches at Croke Park in Dublin. And that kick partly smothered off the boot, I thought. King went up to take the mark. And the mark has been paid. So there wasn't a smother. It was just a miskick kick out of defence. King puts it out wide. Johnson wants one of the forwards to take a mark here. Or maybe punch the ball through, which he can do. Paid the mark. At the second attempt, the mark paid. The Lepich has drifted down. Good to see that he runs the length of the field in international rules as well, Drew. He certainly likes doing that in, a, he in the AFL. So he doesn't not need your free <laughs> licence. He can take it anyway. No, not free licence. He's got down there, but he's taken it. So Lepich from point blank range goes for the three-pointer and gets it. Love, love to run up and down the ground, that's for sure. So Australia just edging a little bit closer. Smith in short for Hurd. Spoil from behind. Hurd taps the ball out. Ratton puts it wider. And uh, Smith had a flying shot then. Had a bit of a look behind him at the Irishman who put him off his kick. Out of bounds. No score. Kick a little bit high for uh, the Irish player there. So Australia win possession again. And they're getting plenty of the football at the moment. Comes to West. The left footer. Right into the hot spot. In front of goal. Good what mark. a mark. Good Sensational mark. by Fay. Darren Fay, the outstanding centre-half back in the competition. Fay goes for a bit of distance. King putting the pressure on for Australia. And lays a good tackle too. Held on too long. Brad Johnson taking a breather, sitting down on the bench. And getting good effects from the Australians on the sideline. Great chase, Kingy. Even though he gave away the free kick. Putting pressure on all the time. Here's a chance for Sexton for Ireland. Hand pass to McGee. On the run, McGrain. Now, great chance here for Ireland until the ball was uh, turned over. Ackermanis has it. His little, little left foot, a pinpoint just inside the sideline. Brett Ratton. And the equivalent of about left half back. McLeod roaming far and wide now. When he stayed just forward in the first quarter, didn't get many opportunities. One on one contest here. Mishandle. Campbell puts the ball over the top. Chance for Nathan Brown. Has to fight off, off his opponent who tackled illegally. Finbar Cullen. And Brown with the free kick. Puts it up high. The Irish crowd didn't like the decision. Well Good mark to Lepich again. I think he's pushed forward a bit, uh, Justin Lepich. I don't think he's necessarily playing back here deep in defence. I think the Australians may have... And it's been a very good move to push him into the forward line because he looks like marking the uh, round ball when most other Australians are struggling with that skill. And the shot by Lepic gets him another three points. So he's up to six personal points. 
and the margin is back to five now, 24 to 19 in favour of Ireland. Good comeback because at one stage Ireland were 12 to nil. Kick by Ryan up to the halfway where it's taken by Cullen. Good chase by Carousella. But Cullen finds support. Here's a shot for a three-pointer, but it comes up a little bit short. And Kellaway takes the mark. The shot coming in from McGrain. Andy Kellaway, what an outstanding season he had to win selection in the All-Australian team and a trip over to Ireland to find himself playing in a goal jumper, goalkeeper for Australia. Smith bouncing the ball through to midfield to Heffernan. Heffernan puts it out wide to Blumfield, his Essendon teammate. Now to Nathan Brown. Kick by Brown. Ireland in good position, but the bounce might favour Australia. The punch down comes, and the shot is pretty inoffensive and easy for the goalkeeper. Now a chance for Australia. Blumfield back with the hand pass. Campbell talks once. Australia putting good physical pressure on, spoiling the marking attempt. But now Ireland have it. The little hand pass gets play underway from McManus, and he follows up. Kieran McManus. In he comes to Martin Daly. Beats the tackle of Bradley. Daly across the ground to McGrain. Few of these names new to me in the uh, international test series. They're playing their first one for Ireland. Gets the hand pass away. Here's Riley. Dragged down. Oh, good three. No. Yeah, I think so. I think it is a three. There's a bit of a box on going on here. Whoops. Oh. Players coming from everywhere. They've given the three. Two, two. Akinmanis, who started things in the first 30 seconds when he took down Peter Canavan. And, uh, well, there's a bit of a smile there, but ball has gone uh, back into play and Australia have a chance at the other end. Mark, no mark taken. Australia ground level, what can they do out of this? Well, Ireland off ground level, absolutely magnificent. Taken by Cullen. 27 to 19 in favour of Ireland. Look at the space out here for Geraghty. Good chase by McLeod. Geraghty gets the ball in. Shot by Riley. For a behind. A one-pointer. Ireland are creating some chances, but they're not finishing off each one to the degree that they should. Well, there's the siren for half-time with the scoreline showing Ireland eight overs, four behinds, and Australia five overs, four behinds. So Australia got close, but Ireland finished the term pretty well. And... Uh, Gee, that was a terrific three-pointer that they got out of this melee just down here near Goal Island that actually started a bit of a dust-up with <laughs> Jason Ackermanis. But here is the half-time score now, and it is 28 to 19 in favour of Ireland, a nine-point lead at the long break. Four ordinary women are about to do something they shouldn't. I can't do it, Carol. You're panicking his nerves, that's all. They will become the country's most wanted. Wanted. <laughs> now, how will they ever deal with this? If he dies, and we are off the murder. Oh, we could get ten years for this. Get ready for British drama that blew the critics away. Whatever you've done, you've got to tell me. With Twist After Twist, Daylight Robbery premieres Friday. And wasn't he just gorgeous? OK, let's see if he's accepted my invitation to dinner. He might be online now. Talk about Mission Impossible. What? Nothing. Hi, Richard. I got your Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh good day. Oh, I'm you have been busy. Not me. Intro line. I just sit back and take my pick. Mind you, I haven't found true love yet. This caller is online right now. So, about dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, but I'm having a great time looking. Intro line. The world's best fun meeting club. Call now. Unleash your passion for adventure. Visit our huge outdoor event and see our greatest ever range of new four-wheel drives, caravans, boats, tents, destinations and more. $2 million worth of caravans, camper trailers, motorhomes and camping gear. And a giant marlin on our fishing simulator. Best range, best prices on all you need to escape the city. And you can catch me at the Land Rover display. 
I've got a few tales to tell. Experience it all at the Australian Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show, Southwest Parkland, South Terrace. Details in the advertiser starts Friday 13th. At SGIC, we're happy to pre-agree the value of your motor vehicle, so if it's stolen or written off, you won't have to replace it with a lesser vehicle. Call SGIC Motor on 133 233 and ask about an agreed value policy on your car. Drive Daihatsu Terios with high driving position for the woman who likes to be on top. Daihatsu. Daihatsu. Thank goodness for spring. It's given Cresta the inspiration for new designs, new colours, new fabrics and to celebrate new low prices from just $29. Call Cresta. one double three zero nine six. 096 Ah, the Motorola V. Shamelessly sexy and free on the Optus Yes Connect 30 plan. It comes with these bonus accessories and it's an exclusive offer from Tandy, your telephone store. Half time and Ireland in front, 28 playing 19. Australia have got five overs, two to Lepic and Carousella, Brown and Smith with an overreach. But Ireland in front at the moment by nine points at half time. Well these two countries have played six series in the past going back to 1984. Let's have a look now at a musical tribute to some of the highlights over the years. His dreams are about the life he had, but his nightmare begins every time he wakes up. What do you do with someone who's only half dead? What future is there for a cop who may never walk again? Not coming back and resigning. With a mystery unfolding before his eyes, with an innocent girl accused, this could be the most personal fight of his life. Blue Healers, Wednesday on 7. Hello, ambulance service. Okay, where are you calling from? What has happened to mummy? Can you tell me? I don't know. You... Mummy's on the floor. Okay, we'll get the ambulance straight around. Is mummy breathing? Yes. 
You can see that she's breathing. She's laying on her side or her back. Go to mummy and pull her over onto her side. Can you do that for me? Yes. All right. There, Alison. All right. Well, the ambulance is coming as fast as they can. We'll hear them soon. SA Ambulance Service. We are here when you call. Unleash your passion for adventure. Visit our huge outdoor event and see our greatest ever range of new four-wheel drives, caravans, boats, tents, destinations and more. Two million dollars worth of caravans, camper trailers, motorhomes and camping gear. And a giant marlin on our fishing simulator. Best range, best prices on all you need to escape the city. And you can catch me at the Land Rover display. I've got a few tales to tell. Experience it all at the Australian four-wheel drive and adventure show Southwest Parkland, South Terrace. Details in the advertiser starts Friday 13th. Telstra Mobile Net presents John Farnham, Man of the Hour Tour. Don't miss the irrepressible John Farnham at the Entertainment Centre, performing all his hits, including songs from the new album, 33 and a Third. John Farnham Live, thanks to Telstra Mobile Net and Talent Works. Tickets on sound now. Come alive to the sport of adventurers. Skim the waves like an albatross, dip like a dolphin. Discover the exhilaration, freedom and sheer pleasure of sailing. Join the friendly folk at the all-new Sail SA On Water Boat Show. Welcome aboard the huge range of yachts and big boats on display. Join in the fun. Take a trip on a deep keel cruiser. And kids, you can have a go too. From dinghies to ocean races, communications to the latest on-water fashions and more. It's all there at Sail SA, October 14 and 15, the Squadron Outer Harbour. The following commercial is G-rated. It contains good news for home buyers. Home loans at 5.99%? Gee, that's a good rate. Half time and Ireland leading 28-19. Hope you've enjoyed the action so far. The skills starting to pick up shortly the second half. In fact, let's go back to our commentators led by Drew Morford. <laughs> of Australians here in the crowd and uh, we had the tenor giving a rousing rendition of Waltzing Matilda here at halftime with the band playing in support and so the Australians who might have watched a bit of television from the Olympics and saw plenty of uh, Advance Australia Fair going on over there. They've come out to support the Australians here today and they need all the support they can get because in the first half the Australians really didn't come to grips with the game all that well and not we feel that they're probably a bit lucky to be just nine points down. Yes, I think so. Certainly the first ten minutes of the game, they didn't trouble the scorers at all. And I guess since then they've hung in there. They uh, got to within five uh, points there uh, uh, late in the second quarter and uh, Ireland got maybe that last couple of scores. But uh, I think Australia are working their way into the game, but it's just the ability to, uh, to make the most of their opportunities. They've defended fairly well because I think Ireland would be disappointed that they may have uh, 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 missed some scoring opportunities that certainly were there if they'd been able to sort of maximise the position. Well, they hit the crossbar once with the goal wide open, so really they should have uh, probably put it in the net a couple of times. And of course, that's a six-pointer, and that would be crucial if they start getting a few of those done. Absolutely, but I thought that Andrew Kellaway did very well on the first one from Graham Garrity. He stopped it well and held on to the ball and came away with it, and that was uh, good for his confidence, and he grew in confidence uh, as the game went, up, went on. But Ireland have missed scores, definitely, but Australia have kept into the game, and I was impressed by their discipline in that they stuck to the task of allowing the not allowing the Irish get the ball away from one player to another in the kick pass, and that was good. Well, I think they also decided the Australians late in that uh, second quarter that they may be a little bit small up forward, and Justin Lepic uh, seemed to be pushed into that part of the ground. Of course, Michael O'Loughlin and uh, who was the other Andrew McLeod were the two from forward line. They weren't getting a lot of the ball. O'Loughlin got hurt early and came off, but I think Lepic, Justin Lepic has got a great ability to stand there and judge the ball at full height above his head, and he and they enabled him to mark the ball once there about 10 metres out where we uh, where we scored. So he scored two goals. So that he's been actually the Australia's main score and he's only been down there for five minutes. Well, Dip, what was the word in the room at half-time? Yeah, good evening very much, Drew. I've got Marty Morrison here, who uh, is known here in Ireland as the what? 
<laughs> the little dipper. Yeah, the little dipper. Thanks you're the, to you. <laughs> you're the veggie, uh, the boundary rider for uh, all the games of Gaelic football. Right. Absolutely, and hurling, and indeed camogie, and uh, sometimes shinty as well as another game where we play the uh, our Scottish counterparts. Now you were here two years ago with uh, a few jars of, uh, of lemonade together. Listen, just tell us about your thoughts of the first half there. Yeah, I think Ireland are doing quite well from an Irish perspective. Uh, we're a little bit surprised that we're, our physical strength is such a factor in this sure. because normally you're a lot bigger and stronger than us. But uh, so far we're doing well. We have the advantage of uh, obviously playing at home, plus the advantage of knowing what the ball is and the way it feels and to be able to kick it accurately. And some of the kicks have been uh, surprisingly quite accurate. I think that's probably your disadvantage in the first half. Yes, at the moment, uh, German's not very happy with the way that we've used the ball. There's mm. some turnovers uh, as we're uh, trying to find our man. And uh, But at the moment, I think it's a very uh, even game, sir. Very even game. And the scoreboard uh, doesn't... Uh, Indeed, it shouldn't intimidate the Australians. I think they're very close. I think they should be able to create a lot more goal-scoring opportunities if they develop a better strategy of letting the ball in and opening out what we would call our full forward line out the two corners because they have the ability, the pace, to get in front of their men, get the ball and lay it off to the on-runner uh, coming in. So I think the Australians are very much alive in this game and very uh, possible winners. And uh, terrific atmosphere. We've got marching bands. We had the Vikings out before. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know the Vikings, but anyway. And then you're here. And I'm here. <laughs> nice to catch up with you, buddy. OK, nice to meet you again, Dipper. Back to you, Drew. Big Dipper and Little Dipper. Well, it certainly started uh, in a fiery sort of fashion with Jason Akamanis virtually picking on Peter Canavan in the first minute of the game, put him out of business with a bleeding nose right from the word go. Uh, but, well, it didn't get out of hand from there, but it could have. Yeah, well, yes, it got a bit willing. It's going to be. You've got two, two teams representing their countries, and uh, they're, they're keen. And every now and again, it's a, enough physical contact in this game that uh, someone might lose their cool, or there might be a little bit of blood spilt. But, uh, yeah, I think both players have got back to playing football pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that you need a little bit of spirit like that. You want to get into the game, and you want to uh, ensure that you're uh, pumped up for the action. And, uh, you know, it just gets out of hand a little bit from time to time but that's nothing to be uh, critical of because I think both coaches will want to have had their players really up for the game and Dermot in games we've seen before first test out here two years ago Australia came from nowhere to win by a point and the draw in Adelaide last year also came from behind to get the draw you play a 30 a 70 minute game this is an 80 minute game so Australia have the potential to finish on strongly yes that has been shown in each of the games that we've played in recent years Ireland are aware of that and certainly Australia with that advantage of a higher degree of fitness and certainly the stamina that's required to stick for the 80 minutes they have shown it and have come back strongly in all of the games and I think nine points three three-pointers is nothing at halftime. Lee that's the way you would have approached it when you were coaching over here two years ago uh, if you're uh, 12 points down with uh, six minutes to play you're still alive and well. Oh well you've got to, still got to keep pushing on but Ireland certainly have been better in the early stages of the game as you say Australia mostly have finished on pretty strongly and as we line up for the start of the second half Australia have pushed uh, Justin Lepic in to work alongside Andrew McLeod. I think uh, having a little bit of height for the ball that falls into that position 10 to 20 metres out from goal is something that the uh, Australians will try and uh, see if Justin Lepic can give them that. Brad Allen gets us underway for the second half and a big leap by Crowd in the middle and Australia win the football as it comes down to uh, uh, Brown. He gets it up to the forward line. High tackle on King, but he shrugs it. Goes back to West. Congested forward area. Australians looking for a mark. Here's a snap for goal by James Hurd. It was uh, Blumfield. And he's put it over for three points, three Justin pointer. Blumfield. Well, fantastic play by Justin Blumfield there because all he could see was a forest of players and he got it over the top of them. Absolute beauty. Now Ireland have the ball at about centre-half back. Up towards midfield. Garrity. It's Kavlin. And he gets out of Hurd's clutches. Puts the ball forward. Blumfield and missed tackle. Comes back to Kavlin. Kavlin. Can he get it over? He can't get it over Kellaway. Well, good turnover there for the Australians. Heard now has it and fumbles it at centre-half back. Now, this is what the Australians want. Three men out near the boundary line, which is what the Irish were doing to Australia in the first half. Giles killed us out there on, on the wing position. 
And David King has given away a free kick here. Blues with the umpire. It was Brett Allen who pinged him. And the free kick will be taken for Ireland by Glenn Ryan. 28 to 22. Early in the second half. Kick by Ryan. Heard from behind, was in no position to spoil, and that was a terrific mark on the run. Mark taken by Towhill with experience in Australian football. And I think Anthony Towhill would be saying, Joe, I'm playing on James Hurd. He's the Essendon Premiership captain, all Australian captain. And I just killed him. Kick by Towhill, straight as an arrow, right to the goal line. Comes off to Ackermanis, he's in trouble. Ball spills free, helped by Hardwick. Bradley, good kick to David King. Drifting down from half forward. Bradley on the run, he'll run all day, the veteran. Out wide he comes to Hurd. The vice captain and captain combining. Kick by Hurd with plenty of distance, as, but it's good seen. You give it up when you do that. And Ireland have the footy, now they don't. An interception was vital there for Australia by Ratton. McLeod with a clean pair of heels. Oh, good save. Sullivan, that was going for a goal. Ball taken by McManaman. And Ireland again. It is a free-flowing game. One end, then the other. Couldn't beat the tackler. West the hand pass in to Crow. Back to West. West off the left foot. Knocked away from Blumfield. And out. Australian ball put out by the Irish player outside the goal scoring area so then it's a 45 meter kick to Australia and will be taken by James Hurd he kicked it longer than most of the Australians today but often to the opposition and there's another one and he didn't go for out and out distance that time but he a bit was, of a turnover he was dropping it on to uh, Justin Lepich's lead, but the Irish, oh, and he took the contact to me. Back, back. Any ball sport, if you're backing back with a ball above your head, you know you're in trouble. And knee into the kidneys, that one have tickled. Oh, look at the skills by Ryan at ground level. Fantastic. So don't take possession, just get it going our way. But it's an Australian ball, Ackermanis. Plenty of dark blue shirts here, Bradley. West in midfield. McLeod leads in short. McLeod's got it. Too far out to score with a round ball. Heard. Lepic charges at it. Clears a path. Ryan for Ireland. And good vision. Puts the ball out wide. And uh, Faye just gets the kick away before being bowled over by Bradley. Hardwick, good skills. A very high ball. Only chance was Blumfield. Comes to Giles. Clever football by Ireland. Out to Riley. Beating the high tackle, Kavlin. Riley double passed. What numbers here? Woe Woden giving chase. Riley gets the ball up. Giles puts it to the goal square. Clever! Hunts through for a goal! Goal scorer is Garrity. First goal of the game to Ireland. Could be a game breaker. And they are. There's such morale boosters, the six pointers. Uh, okay, you get the six points. That's great. But it just lifts. The crowd lifts. The players lift. And uh, finally, Ireland have been able to make the most. Hasn't been doing a lot, Peter Cameron, being interchanged at the moment. But his ability, just a quick knock on to Garrity, set up that goal. Terrific handling by the Irish there. Riley did terrific on the run. Overlapped a couple of times, but it was the handling in front of goal by Canavan back to Garrity. Giles first to Canavan, then to Garrity, that really made the goal. Terrific handling, terrific score. Crowd buzzing. And here's Garrity again putting pressure on, but Australia have the football. Ackermanis with good vision. Puts it out wide. Rusciuto runs onto it. Well, he was going faster than his legs could cope with. Now to Harvey. In the bright sunshine at Croke Park. Harvey, Forks, Forks once, Forks twice. And puts it wide for a behind. His first score for the game. But Australia with a lot to make up after the goal by Garrity for Ireland. A six-pointer, the first six-pointer of the game. And it indicates to me that if you can flick the ball around, you're better off getting goals that way than taking big marks. 
you know, really? in our game, you, you're going to get scores out of marks. Well, the ball drops so much. The round ball tends to get top spin on. It drops quickly. Very hard to mark the ball bigger, uh, long uh, in, above your head. And just setting up, as you say, just trying to quick hands, surging the ball into that. Uh, and that's the most exciting part of this game. When you see a surge of players heading towards their uh, their own goal, it's fantastic. There's no doubt about it, but you've got to move the football. Mm. If, you, if you hold it and carry it, and it slows the game down and people will come in on top of you. You've got to move the football, and I think that's what happened in the end there. Three or four players running with the ball, move it quickly as possible, the scores will come. This so is a good shot, Cam. Yeah. Set shot, isn't it, Drew? And uh, uh, probably a 35-metre shot. The kind of goals that Australia need to kick if they can uh, wind Ireland in. He won't get a goal from this. He'll be going for the over. And he misses it to the left-hand side for one. So marks on the forward line. All it gives you is a set shot with a round ball. And the Australians seem to get the shakes with that a little bit. Ball back into play quickly. 34-24. Uh, Ireland by 10. And... Uh, Watch the way Ireland worked this ball, and that was absolutely fantastic there by Canavan, not to take possession, but to deflect the ball onto Garrity, who was running into an open goal. Little a goalkeeper can do with that. Here's a turnover in midfield coming up, and Australians have some numbers here. Now, a soccer forward would have been better than Uze trying to pick the ball up, but it still worked out for Australia okay. Crowe up to the forward line, Lepic busts the pack open, doesn't come out with the football. Sean Martin Lockhart got it for Ireland. In it comes to Rainbow. They had them lined out like a rugby backline then, Ireland. And he had all sorts of uh, choices. Oh, good turn. Yeah, good Garrity. turn. They absolutely out Fox the Australian defender then. But what good a tackle. tackle. Absolutely phenomenal tackle laid by Chris Heffernan, who was beaten the first time, came back into the contest, and Australia got the football. Well done by Chris Heffernan. Rashudo midfield. Oh, he's had to Bad give it up. Over this. And this could be very costly. Here's a chance for Ireland through Kavlin. He gets it across to a teammate. The ball is put out wide here to McManus. He goes forward. Garrity overruns. And had a bit of a fumble, allowing Campbell to gain possession. Mark Rashudo at right half back. Ten point game in favour of Ireland. Midway through the third quarter. Harvey. Out to Brown. Lepic, the only hope out, number two to one. He's got it. He's marked it. It's going to be hard to do that. They've certainly put Justin Lepic in for exactly that play. Kick the ball above his head, and he does do that extremely well, but it's very hard to take half a dozen marks in that fashion in this game. And what chance the three-pointer. See, the Australians with the round ball, he couldn't manage the three, and ones aren't good enough. They're very disappointed, Drew, because uh, the way the boys have been trained the last nine or ten days at a camp, uh, they've been putting them through you know, the 20-metre mark. But I suppose pressure puts that out of the question now, doesn't it? Here's Giles, who was the Irish captain, very similar to James Hurd, really. His father played for me. His grandfather played hurling for me. So three generations for me, as Hurd is three generations of Essendon. Comes back to Giles, one of the stars of Irish football, captaining for the first time in his mid-twenties. Well done by Carousella to win possession. Well, Campbell didn't know the pressure was there from behind. Carousella was good at ground level. King. Lepic won out this time with his opponent. Oh, he almost socketed it across to a teammate, Brett Ratton, going past. Giles. Beautiful to Steins. Brian Steins, who was the younger brother of Jim, and got a lot less hair. Along the ground, good hands by McManaman. Steins, in he goes. Steins will get it back. Great chase by Johnson. Rusciuto worked his opponent off the ball. Allowed Australia to win possession. Ackermanis could have been dangerous, but they've worked it out of defence pretty well. Heffernan. To Rowan Smith. Now Australia need to set up, and if they can... Have enough forwards and flip the ball around like the Irishman did rather than kick long and hope for a mark. That might be the go. This is the fella who can do it. Andy McLeod. Watch him go. Turn of speed. Bang. But didn't give it enough. Game of inches. Yeah, just needed yes. a bit more. Cormac Sullivan a good save. 
courageous mark taken out here by Towhill. Well stopped by Sullivan on the crossbar. Took it well, kept his eye on the ball. The sun is in his eyes. Sorry, that was McManus back there, taking the mark just behind halfway. Now it's McManus. Strategy going on. Players being moved around. Right, Brian, Brian McAniff, the manager, and Paddy Clark, the assistant manager, there with the board. Making radio contact down to the men at ground level who can make the changes. Crowd punches from behind, but it falls in the path of Ireland. And look at him go. Lockhart goes over the top to Giles. He is punching a terrific tackle by Hardwick. And uh, the Irish player is not used to being tackled. And there's one lesson they ought to learn. Watch out for Hardwick, because he <laughs> doesn't miss you. Allowed to play on here, and there's a bit of pressure. Gone over for the three-pointer. Brian Steins, was it? Brian Steins was there in the area and was looking high at the ball. Yes, yep. it was. Brian Steins gets the three points for Ireland there. That's his first score of the game. 37 to 25, so the Australians' fitness late in the game is going to be a crucial factor because they sure look like having to come from behind. Brown Smith, kick goes astray, Toe, uh, toe Hill. Now Hurd needs to find a teammate. He goes for distance. Lepic is there, and it clears the pack. I'm afraid to say, Lee, I reckon that Hurdy's kicks aren't to the advantage of the side. Well, I think he's trying to kick the ball just with a bit too much distance. So certainly the Australians pre-game. The idea was to hold possession, uh, less, lessen the length of the kick, but just try and maintain possession. Uh, kicking the ball with distance, that's the kind of kick you need. Just a little controlled one. Lose 10 metres, but uh, kick it in the uh, direction of the teammate. Scott West has it on the forward line. There's nobody there for the Australians, and it makes it pretty easy for Sullivan. Oh, he's put it out. Oh, it's kept in. Great piece of play. And a good mark to Trent Crowe. Drew, I've got uh, Jimmy Stein. Jimmy, how you see the game at the moment? Oh, look, we're in plenty of possession, but we're just struggling to actually find the target when we bring it in. And then, you know, we're forced to shoot from that far, we're forced to kick it in long, and so we just really got to change the way we need to keep possession and chip it around rather than handballing it when we get in close because we're just turning it over. Thanks, mate. I just saw Rowan Smith having a shot and missing absolutely everything. This is Toe Hill. Deep in the left back pocket. Up towards midfield. Hardwick to his opponent out. Allowing McLeod in. Comes to Smith. Across the ground to Hurd. They're putting a lot of play through the captain, James Hurd. Just gets away. McLeod. Haven't seen enough of Andy McLeod. That kicks in a bit short. Ireland playing in front. And it wasn't a kick to the advantage of Brett Ratton. Who won his third best and fairest this year for Carlton, sharing the award with Camparelli. Back to midfield. Smith. Not quite the mark. West to Bradley. Kicked by Bradley. King. Had the good sport put on by Ryan. And Ryan tackled illegally. Advantage to the Australians. King centres. And that's good play. And now a chance for James Hurd. Now, now, Drew, you mentioned Craig Bradley then. We played together, Drew, myself and Russell Green and Jared Hilly played together in 1984. And he's still going. Hurd for three points. Gets them. The silence will tell you it's a three. And the first score for the Australian captain. Margin back to nine points. West putting on pressure. Here's a chance for the Australians. Good running here. Johnson puts it to the goal line. A punch will be handy. Oh, great save by Sullivan. Non-stop action at both ends of the ground. 37 to 28 in favour of Ireland in the third quarter. Four and a half minutes to go to three-quarter time. Smith turning his opponent inside out. Through Hurd it goes to David King. Kick by King. Lepic charges at it. His opponent hits the deck. Lepper hasn't got the ball, though. Island out of defence. Woden from behind, the Brownlow medalist. It comes to McLeod. I'm looking forward to him really showing some skills. That's terrific by McLeod to Lepic. Certainly in control of the game at the moment, the Australians. They're behind on the scoreboard, but they're 
last five minutes of the game, they've really uh, pretty much monopolised possession. And that's what they want to do, Lee, from the centre. They just want to chip in, chip in until they find that loose man. At least have a shot for a three-pointer. And the Irish have found great difficulty in trying to get the ball past the halfway line. Australia have been working very hard right across the field and getting a nice ball in. Well kicked. And the shot for goal is over for a three-pointer. So Justin Lepic has scored ten points for the game to be easily Australia's highest scorer. And he started the game in defence. So they're within six points now, the Australians. So the only difference between the sides is the goal scored by Ireland in this term by Geraghty. So not much of a margin in the game at all with three minutes remaining to three-quarter time. Cullen pops it over the top to McGrain. Toehill's kick misses Giles. It comes to Campbell. Look at Lepic again. Yes, it's worked quite well. I think the Australians went for more uh, agility early in their deep in their forward line, but Justin Lepic going near is just giving them a play who's got a chance of marking the ball when it does come in a little bit higher. Dermot Brereton pacing the sideline, and Lepic gets another three-pointer. Australia right back in this game now. It's been like the tortoise and the hare. Ireland led 12-0 at one stage, and now three points in it. I think Australia didn't allow Ireland to get any kick in at all, so to slow up the game, get the mark and slow the game and start. It was hand pass all the time, great pressure. This is the first time they have been past the halfway line in four minutes. Garrity, the goal scorer, he's the only player to get the ball in the net today in this game for a six-pointer. Steins, Ireland looking dangerous again. Steins off the left, unerringly to goal, over for three points. His second three-pointer of this third quarter. A steadier for Ireland. Under two minutes left. Six points the margin in favour of the home side. The Australians were really working the interchange bench. About two minutes ago, they made five changes at one time. Ball put out in front of David King. Got a bit of room. Being closed down near the boundary line by Finbar Cullen. But the centering ball has been marked in defence by Sexton. Brown chasing hard as the goalkeeper comes off his line. Steins handles for himself. That's great play. Just experience in the game. Oh, look at Hardwick. Magnificent play. He is hard as nails. Campbell down the line. Australia 2-1 to one in numbers here. Harvey takes the mark. Brent Harvey centres the ball. It's over the head of Lepic and all Ireland behind him. He's been asked to do a lot, Justin Lepic. He's playing almost the role of Wayne Carey for North Melbourne. Yeah, they do. They do an extremely good job, uh, the Irish defenders, of getting back to uh, block up that area, what you'd call the hot spot. They're 20 metres out from goal position. They're getting extra numbers back there when the ball tends to float in. Uh, but that extra Irish player is taking possession. But they're having trouble getting a long way from the Australian goal just at the moment, Dermot. Absolutely, they are. And uh, they're working the kick pretty well there. But in the five or seven minutes before that, Australia were making them hand pass the ball and then of course when you get possession from the hand pass you've got to move it and uh, it wasn't good just 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter and you'd have to give Australia a chance of coming from behind and pinching it in the last because in the past they've shown they can finish on strongly at least nearly a jump ball who's taken that mark it is a jump ball I think but they're playing and the crowd counting down the clock that'll probably be the end of the action Although Brett Allen does get his uh, ball up away. Comes to Carousella. The siren beats him as Carousella's shot was away to the right anyway. Well, it was a comeback of great proportion by Australia after Ireland got the first goal of the match in that third quarter to Geraghty. There's the goal scorer. And so at three-quarter time, it's one goal only in the game to Ireland. And as usual often happens, it's uh, 16 scoring shots uh, to Australia, but... Only 15 to Ireland, but Ireland in front, just scoring yeah, better. Yeah, better. yeah, all right, Walter, yeah. Going, going for four or five. So it's one goal, ten overs and four behinds, to nine overs and seven behinds at three-quarter time. You'll be surprised at what can be achieved with such little time and money. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah! A
Ground Force team are back for an all-new series. Returns Wednesday on 7. You're in a nightmare filled with creatures that bite, that kill. A nightmare more terrifying because it's real. Welcome to nature's dark side. Welcome to Survival of the Wild. An amazing video series that takes you on an intense journey into a real-life chamber of horrors. Only from Time Life. Filmed around the world, each video reveals how these shrewd hunters choose their prey, stalk their victims, and move in for the kill. You can become a participant in the deadliest game of all. Start with Crocodiles, the last remaining monsters of the dinosaur era. Deadly, untamed, merciless. Weighing over a ton, these cold-blooded beasts have jaws like a steel trap and teeth like deadly spikes. Witness these killing machines in graphic close-up. Creatures so fierce that only the brave dare get near enough to film them. Your introductory video is only $14.95. Call 1-300-300-353 now and invite a crocodile into your living room. Use your credit card and we'll send you a second video, Kill a Whale, exploring this mysterious giant of the deep. Normally $24.95, yours absolutely free. Other videos in this series take you even further into the shadow world with Snake, Wolf, Wildcat and more. Get an uncensored and unflinching view of the stunning tactics that make them nature's most efficient hunters. Explore the beauty and cruelty of nature so close it will make your skin crawl. Confront nature's most chilling reality. Kill or starve. And you'll see what lethal tactics these killers resort to when desperation sets in. So call 1-300-300-353 now to start your collection with Crocodile for only $14.95. Use your credit card and you'll also receive Kill a Whale absolutely free. That's almost $50. $50 value for only $14.95. Call now. I'm starting my own tap room. Have you got any idea what it takes to put on a show? Are you going to rehearse this thing or what? Root Man is fresh, fabulous, foot-stomping fun from the creator of Tap Dogs. Root Man. Danger, heartbreak. You won't believe what happens at a hot auction. That's right, laugh about it. The pressure cooker world of new hot auctions. Wednesdays 8 on 7 after Ground Force. Ground Force. Well, Australia's showing great improvement in that third quarter and trailing now by just six. Justin Lepich, the star, has 13 points, including four overs. And Damien Hardwick back in defence, also outstanding. One quarter to go. Let's go back to our commentary team, led by Drew Morfitt and Lee Matthews. Well, in that third quarter, after Graham Garrett, he scored the only goal of the game, Ireland were leading by about 15 points. So the Australians have got it back to six. And... Uh... In with a big chance. Dipper? Yeah, good on you, Drew. Uh, yeah, very exciting game now when uh, Jeremy Brewer just sits through where he plays. Just keep it confidence. I mean, you've got plenty of confidence, plenty of running ability. Andrew Callaway just received uh, nine stitches over his uh, left eye, so keep an eye on that. I'm sure he'll um, get a bit of a shiner tonight. So, about to go for the start of the last quarter. And the only thing we're looking for is the a football. Ball. Oh, it's a ball <laughs> gone. So let's see if it is. Yeah, well, certainly that third quarter, only three scoring shots to Ireland. They kicked that uh, one goal, the six-pointer, and only two uh, overs, where Australia had seven scoring shots. So certainly uh, with the trend of the game, you've got to say this game is very, very evenly matched as we get into this last 20 minutes. Yeah, I think that uh, at the end of the first, it was plus five for Ireland. At the end of the second, it was plus nine, and it is plus six now. So all to play for. Well, Lepic has gone into the uh, ruck now, so he's been the star forward and had to try and win the hit out to start the quarter and was unsuccessful. Now he goes to the forward line. The hand pass a little bit slick for Rusciuto from McLeod. The two Crows players combined to actually lose the ball here. Whoa, LaRue went through very quickly. And it's a little backhander by McLeod. Wins the football for Australia, and now eventually they've turned it over. Midfield. Good early. Tackle. Good that tackle. was a great tackle as early was trying to bounce around his opponent. It comes to Hurd. Kick by Hurd to Lepic. He's gone forward after the opening bounce. Lepic goes for the three. And it looks pretty good. No, just offline or behind. 
So he has played a big role for Australia, starting in defence, taking the tap out, and going forward and being Australia's leading scorer. Margin back to five points. Early stages last quarter. Well, he's done it again, Canavan, just tapping the ball out. And now the shot by Daly is offline, and Kellaway makes sure that there's no false signal here. <laughs> he said, that's missed, that's missed. And he was right, they agree with him. It is a behind, one point. Daly, four points for the game. Kellaway short. Ackermanis. Oh, poor kick by Ackermanis. Straight to Cullen. Finbar Cullen. And it could be costly. It's the Giles. Distance with that kick. And through for a point. First score for Trevor Giles. The Irish captain. Seven point margin. Giles, who was very influential in uh, Australia last year and scored quite freely, hasn't been shooting at all. I think the role as captain, he's more of a playmaker and an organiser and looking at how the things are running on the field rather than getting into shooting position. So that was his first shot at goal, I think. Mm. James Hurd tried to beat the park and the whistle's gone and he's been pinged by the Irish umpire, Pat McKenemy, and uh, it's a turnover. Ireland finish up with the football. Comes here to Garrity. Oh, look at the space out here in front of goal. Now, this could be something for Ireland. Cullen goes for the three and gets it. No, he missed it. Oh, no, way to the right-hand side. So, four points to Finbar Cullen. It looked a certain three. I think he had the, the thought then of trying to surge through for the six-pointer, but he uh, he went for what he thought was a better percentage option, but uh, missed, missed what was a relatively easy shot for him. Should have, should have got three points. He was thinking of passing it inside, but it should have been three points. Carousella in midfield. McLeod trying to use his pace. Out he comes wide to Blumfield. McLeod again. Carousella. Australia working into this breeze in the last quarter and having to come from behind to win the game. Lepich is the focal point down there for the Australians. If he doesn't mark it, it's pretty easy for Ireland to come away like this with the football. Giles had a picnic out there on the wing all day. Gets the ball back to Fay. Just beats the tackle. Good tackle. Well, the ball's gone out of bounds. And they wouldn't be used to this, Dermot. Uh, taking all these knocks is something that they've had to prepare for. Absolutely. Not used to it at all. No body contact in the game, really, other than shoulder to shoulder, side to side, one foot on the ground. And um, being tackled and pulled out of the game like that is completely different, and they have to... Be alert to move the ball away quickly and not be caught. Yeah, he can beat the tacklers by uh, moving the ball. There's no doubt about that. Ryan goes from half back to half forward. Chance here for Daly. Will of the wisp. Gets around onto his unfavoured right-hand side. Now from the forward pocket. Centering ball is chopped off by Hardwick for Australia. Floats it to McLeod, who's at the opposite end of the ground from where he started. Comes to Hurd. On the run now is uh, Heffernan. Puts it out wide to Uze. Bit of room now for Australia. Lepic and the mark. Well, the man in front took the mark very casually. Blake Carousella, virtually one-handed. Well, I think we could say even this far out, it's really quite simple. A side that can make the most of their opportunity. Both sides are going to get forward. And Ireland went forward, missed that shot. Colin got the one-pointer instead of the three-pointer. Now if Carousella can get the three-pointer. Which he does. And Australia right in the contest, trailing by five. Well, they've made hard work for a few of those set shots, but Blake Carousella made it look pretty easy. I guess it sounds very simple, but any ball sport is like it, isn't it? The most of the scoring opportunities, the possession is usually shared, but just the ability of uh, to score when you get a chance. Well, here is Carousella again. again, taking a mark, and uh, on the evidence of the last kick, it couldn't be in better hands with Blake Carousella. And he could put Australia within two points here. Kick from about 35 metres. Carousella, plenty of height, straight as a dart. Australia right in it. Now, Drew, I've got uh, Graham Corns looking at the, uh, the defence. How are you seeing the game at the moment, Graham? Well, if we can just control the ball, dude. We're trying to kick it too long. It's going to straight at the start of this quarter. We've gone shorter. We look for the options wider. 
and uh, Blake Carousel has taken a few good marks and converted them uh, in the last couple of minutes. So we, we, we are well and truly in this. That's fine. 43 to 41. Ireland have led all day since a blistering start. But Australia just pegging them back. And Australia have all pushed forward into attack. But this is a monster kick. That is the longest kick of the game. And well, a terrific mark. mark to Garrity. Mark. His hand pass knocked down. That was crucial. Fantastic play by Chris Heffernan after he was beaten for the mark. And then he blocked the hand pass. And the turnover could set something up here for Australia. The hand pass out in front of West. He couldn't reach it in time. Now Australia a chance. Ball on the ground. They've got it. Centering ball. Lepic, good hands. Ridden into the ground. Play on, says the umpire. Ireland come away with it through Ryan. Daly, back to Ryan. Brilliant handballing through the middle of the well, park. through here. Oh, look at the support. Daly's kept on going. It's being run up by Early. He's got Daly inside. Early goes for the three and gets it. No, he's missed it, I think, Drew. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, he got it. Well done. Dermot Early. Must have thought he would have gone for a six-pointer then. He really looked like it was cold to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, I think that um, came too close to goal. Canavan was with him, thought he was going to give it to him, and uh, in the end, the only option on was to tap it over the bar. Blumfield. Centres the ball, Lepic the marking target again. It comes down to Woden, outside of his foot and away to the right-hand side for one. First score for the Brownlow medalist. Four points the margin, Ireland in front. Giles has been left and right wing. He tried to hack that out of the air and put it out of bounds for an Australian ball. Wayne Campbell to take it. All the momentum at the moment with the Australians. Remarkable since they trailed 12-0 early in the game. Heard, Lepic is there, it comes to the front. Carousel to Lepic, he's pulled to the ground. Chance for Ratton, kicked into the pack. Kicked backwards by Ireland here. Oh, great Good mark, mark taken mark. by Cullen. Didn't he stretch the hamstrings? Finbar Cullen almost out in the car park. Kept his eye on the ball that time. Well done, Finbar Cullen. Good mark. Running hard for a dropping ball. Very hard to catch. Pressure right on. Haven't these test matches over the last couple of years been close? Once again, nothing in it. An important mark there for Ireland. Didn't the crowd rise? We had a crowd figure given to us earlier. 38,160. Phenomenal crowd, considering yesterday there were... They were here for the replay of the All-Ireland Final. And David King being pretty physical. Giving away the free kick. Now Daly. 46 to 42. Oh, Tohill got hands to it but couldn't take the mark. Australia have the football. Scott West. Good running by Craig Bradley. We've been saying that for about 17 years. <laughs> David King. Not too sure. Third. A few of the players having a bit of a blow at the moment. Blumfield. The Australians have used the interchange bench more than Ireland. And they might be just a little fresher at the end. Well, we've got ten and a half minutes to find out. Blumfield. Good chase by the Irish defence. Woe Woden pops it into the hot spot. Carousella, the man of the moment. Does read the flight of the ball, whether it's the oval Australian ball he's used to or the, uh, or the round international rules ball. He's just got a great ability to judge the flight in the air, see it dropping short, get their third really good mark in this final turn. Great view of this, and a perfect kick by Blake Carousella. He has been... He stood up to be counted in the last quarter. He scored three three-pointers for Australia in this last term, and it's one point the difference. So Carousella's personal tally is 13 points in the game. Lepic is 14. The crowd absolutely rising to fever pitch here at the moment with nine and a half minutes to go. Ireland under siege. Lepic, the hand pass away. Johnson. Hand pass behind Hurd, but he's got a bit of time. James Hurd always seems to have time. Back to Carousella, but too long for him this time. And it bounces through for a point. Scores level. 
50, uh, 46, 45, 46 all, scores level, nine minutes, 10 seconds left on the clock. It's as close as Australia have been. Trailed all day. That's good Whistle's pressure, gone. that's what they need now, boys. Well, McLeod, is it a play on situation? No, it's no score. Umpire Brett Allen had blown the whistle. And Dermot Brereton sending out Russell Green to deliver a message. It was a holding the ball call, was it? Was it? Yes, yeah, I think, think it was a holding the ball call and it's a free kick to Australia and a chance to take the lead for the first time in the game. Craig Bradley leaves it to Carousella. Well, Blake Carousella has been a star in this last quarter with nine personal points. Australia had come from six behind to level the scores. Carousella to put Australia in front for the first time. Well, he has, but only by a point. Australia lead by one. What an atmosphere here at Croke Park. Crowd nearly 40,000, one point the difference, and the test matches continue to thrill and excite. That ball skewed away from Carousella with a spin on it. Grabbed by Johnson, now to West. Wide to Hurd. He's got Crowd in support. Very high ball. Lepich is there for the mark. Gloved hands go up everywhere. McLeod! McLeod breaks free. Back to Lepich. Lepich for three. He's got it! Australia by four points. It's really good play to keep uh, the ball in control uh, on the 25-metre uh, mark there by Australia, which allowed them to set up that shot. Yeah, great uh, evasion, wasn't it, by Andrew McLeod. The ability just to hold possession, knock off the tackle. Australia really finishing strong. Crowd gets one more. A point to Trent Crowd, his second point of the game. Well, 51-46. These, these games are remarkable, aren't they, <laughs> they don't? Oh. Oh. High tackle, strays ball. I think the use of the interchange bench has been crucial here. The Australians have, must have used 50 interchanges, and they're fresher. They picked the side, basically, with their half a dozen or their five interchanges, but their five main midfield running players automatically interchanging with, uh, with five on the bench, just so they had a fresh play all the time. Carousella nearly held it long enough. Giles pulled off his kick. Toe Hill gets it to ground level. Ryan gets the hand pass going. Listen to the crowd rise as Ireland have a chance. They Got haven't the been numbers. in attack too often. The hand pass comes out wide to Finbar Cullen. Cullen puts it over to Garrity. He runs into trouble with Hardwick. That is big trouble. You're holding, holding the, the ball. ball. And uh, Garrity and Hardwick wanting to go on with it. James Hurd coming in and getting rid of Garrity as well. Is it Garrity free? Yeah, the Australian bench is complaining down here about that, that free. They thought Australia should have had the ball there because well, I think Gary had an opportunity to get rid of it. Well, I, I think it What's was holding against for? Garrity, but it's been reversed against Hardwick. Probably so. Uh, if we saw it again, how did Cullen play the ball to Garrity? Was it a hand pass or a foot pass? If it was a foot pass, he made a mark. No, no, it was a, yeah, I'm sure it was a knock-on, actually. Was, yeah, so... Um, Maybe it was a reverse decision. So Graham Garrity looking for three points. He missed it to the right. Well, you would have expected Garrity to get that then. He's scored the only goal of the game. A three-pointer would have been handy then. Johnson has it at midfield for Australia. Getting back in defence for Ireland was Ryan. Puts the hand pass away. Australia have the ball. Carousella, well done to Harvey. Australia have the numbers. Harvey for three. Over it goes. Brent Harvey. I just think they've got a feel now that uh, Australia can run over him now. What was the plan uh, at the start of the game? That's what they're using the bench. They've used the bench 58 times in this game. It is 58. That is incredible. And that kicks Australia. Hardwick, good hands at ground level. Out to Rusciuto. The Australians looking good and confident at the moment. Up towards Harvey, but he is swamped. Comes to the front to Lockhart. He puts it wide. Here's the captain, Trevor Giles, a legend in uh, Gaelic football. It comes in field to Whelan. Whelan going for a run. He goes for a long-range shot offline, and nothing. Yeah, no it's a pressure. It was a bad option, really, but the pressure of the game, the fact that the Australians have got the lead now, all of a sudden the Irish players are starting to uh, maybe pick the wrong option. Well, I think one of the things that uh, Australia were not good at last year was getting the ball out from the goalkeeper, and Ireland put intense pressure on them all the time. This year, 
and particularly in this quarter the Sullivan and goal has not been able to get the ball out at all to his Irish players and the pressure that Australia are putting on them is phenomenal terrific fitness and terrific discipline Australia have scored 20 points to seven in this last quarter to come from behind and lead by seven Rashudo gets it to Hurd Hurd always with so much time out to Rowan Smith under four minutes remaining Smith with Giles high ball two against two no mark and it comes to Ireland in front of the pack Rainbow sweeps it up they work it out they're not done with yet Steins puts it to Dermot Early Early look at the paddock in front of him Dad's in the commentary box with us oh Dermot tried to get around lost his footing lost the football Rhodes got it for Australia good pass too to Nathan Brown Brown up to Lepich. Good climb at it. No mark though this time. Ryan a bit too slow. He's lost it. Rashudo has it. Beautiful pass. And the mark to Adam Uze. And I believe he has been kicking it beautifully in training during the week. It's the 30 metre. I think he's worth uh, going back as he is. Taking his time. Running the clock down. Knows they've got the lead. Take your time. Pull the socks up. Dermot Brereton looking nervous. He made his debut as coach in the series in Australia last year. Australia lost the series on aggregate. Ireland won the first test at the MCG. The second test at Football Park was a draw. So Dermot looking to get his first win as an Australian coach. Uze is away to the left. And a few spots of rain is happening now there, boys. We've got everything now. Just two points for Adam Uze in the game. Certainly good lead. Eight points with two and a half minutes to go. Yes, well, Ireland have come to a standstill. Just seven points in this last quarter. It just come down two inches now, doesn't it, Lee? To be in this position before? It certainly does. But uh, you'd like to have the lead. You'd like to be in Australia's position. They just really have to make sure they don't panic when they get possession, maintain possession. Really, they've just got to make sure that they don't let Ireland through the score. Two points remaining in the game. Play on. Is it a play-on situation? Australia have the ball grabbed by uh, West. But the kick a little bit short. Mark taken by Sullivan on the goal line. Into a contested area. This could be dangerous, but it's a free kick against McLeod. Taken by Towhill. All the Australian interchange players, they're not sitting back relaxing. They're all up on their feet on the sideline. This could be a momentous win for Australia here after a slow start. David King marks. Out wide to Campbell. Wayne Campbell. Getting dark and overcast here at Croke Park after a sunny afternoon. Cole, the call for the banjo just hold it up, hold it up, keep holding possession of the ball. Heard. So, don't have any shots, just hang on to it. And yes, Rowan Smith with the hand up saying, yes, we'll just poke it around here. Australia defending their lead. The crowd aren't going to like it, but this is not unusual, I guess, in Australian rules to defend the lead for the last minute or two. You've got the lead, take your time. Oh, I heard he's even got hamstring problems. This one, a new one, got a bit of cramp. Over the top he goes to Andy McLeod. An eight-point lead to Australia. Players know exactly what's going on. Less than a minute to go. No time on. Well, the first test at Croke Park a couple of years ago, Australia came from nowhere and won it by a point. Today they're going to come from nowhere and win it by a bit more. The lead is eight points, 35 seconds left in the game. Hurd back into Smith. Back to Hurd, he's had a few touches lately. James Hurd, there's the clock counting down. Might get another score yet. Uze, away to the left and no score. Ireland bring it into play quickly through Sullivan, the goalkeeper. Surely the time's run out now for Ireland, even if they put it in the net. They've scored the only goal of the game, but it won't be enough. The crowd counting down as the clock on the scoreboard shows the countdown. Ireland have some numbers up forward here. Have they got time to score? The siren beats them. Oh, good heavens. Nah, it's into the it's net, over. but it's too late. Larry Riley got it into the net, but Australia have won the first test match. Dermot Brereton breaks the ice as Australian coach with his first victory. There he is with Dipper and Jared Healy. Well done, Dermot. Well done, the Australians. And as we thought, Australia outlasted Ireland. The last 10 minutes, crucial. Well, familiar scenes. Two years ago, certainly Australia came from behind. It was much later in the game, won by a solitary point. But this is just a fantastic feeling. These Australian players together representing uh, their country on foreign soil and getting home and winning. And uh, it's just a fantastic moment for those guys. I 
done a lot of things in footy and a lot, a lot of great memories. But two years ago, in this exact circumstance, one of the highlights of my football life, I think, when we actually were able to win the first test in 1998. Well, I think that uh, you can see the reaction from the Australians with the way they've come into the huddle in the middle of the field. They're absolutely delighted. And you must say that they absolutely deserve the victory because even though they were behind by five in the first quarter, nine at half time, and six in the second quarter, they were always in the game. They were always moving well. And in the last quarter, they played exceptional football, putting fierce pressure on Ireland and making sure that Ireland turned the ball over and they deserved to win the game. A terrific game. 38,000 today, 58,000 next week. Yes, yeah, certainly. Huge I think, next week. Yeah. One of the Australian concerns is that having a lot of their players not having played for quite a while with the end of the AFL season being, well, four weeks ago, the grand final, a bit over that, and then a lot of the players hadn't played for eight or ten weeks, uh, that Ireland may have uh, been a little bit uh, f uh, fitter, but certainly the Australians' ability to run hard, I think, is a credit to the professionalism of these guys that they've looked after themselves so well since their AFL commitments have finished. Well, just the graph on Ireland scoring, quarter by quarter they scored 12 points, 16 points, 12 points, and just seven in the last two. Yeah, yeah no, they stopped, no doubt about that. Uh, Australia's second half was fantastic. Well, here's a song out on the ground. Let's listen to them. one of your football <laughs> memories in life to actually sing the anthem and you've won five premierships. I know how it must feel for these blokes. Dippers down in amongst them with Hurdy. I certainly am, Drew. Well, what a year you've been having, son. Captain of the right. All-Australian team. Congratulations. Just tell us what you're feeling at the moment. Oh, look, it's amazing. You know, I think at half-time we didn't think we were going to win. We really uh, were struggling a bit with our fitness and we used the ball a bit better. And what a great feeling. I didn't think it'd be as good as this. It's just fantastic. The game itself, it's a very fast game, James. Yeah, it sure is. You know, we were rotating every five minutes in the first three quarters to keep us fresh, and uh, it paid off. I mean, we, um, we ran them over the top, and look, our skills got better. It's a great feeling. Just take a breather now. I mean, the game itself, I, we've been here for about three or four days. It's a terrific country to come and visit, but uh, the first win was very, very important for us. Yeah, look, it was important. I think we're going to have a good time now, Dipper. You know, we can uh, relax for a couple of days, have a few drinks, and and think about the next game, but gee, it's going to be a good night James tonight, I'll tell you what. Good on you, mate. James all heard they call him over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, Dipper. Well, what a scoreline. It was 55 points to 47 at the end, an eight-point win to the Australians, and it's raining pretty heavily now, I just after if, the finish. If Dipper's still down there, Michael O'Loughlin uh, went off the field, Dip. If you're still on, uh, just, I guess, for the Swan supporters, maybe back in Australia, uh, has he done anything uh, of any nature to himself? Obviously, Dipper's not there. No. He's joining the celebration, Drew. So, yeah. it's been Australia by eight points, and we'll take a short break from Croke Park. Their Olympics. Um, not a bad summer. In their words. St. Cross, we did it. Australia's best ever team tell Andrew Hall. Tonight, 7.30, exclusive on 7. Olympic debrief with Andrew Denton. At 30,000 feet, your brain space expands as your planning skills meet your split-second reflexes. At 2,000 feet, your management skills kick in while you juggle a billion things at once. People visual in the water. Feet, the adrenaline drives your leadership training and your spirit of adventure takes over. Take take At tree level, you just have to rely on guts and determination. And down on the ground, you put over a million bucks into the training that'll get you there. The Navy, Army and Air Force need pilots and airborne tacticians. Call 13 19 It's not just a real job, it's an unreal job. If you can hang washing on it, it's a clothesline. But if it can handle a full load, it's a hills clothesline. Want it to last? Head for the hills. 
Attention passengers, looking for the cheapest airfares? Flight Center guarantees to have the cheapest airfares to every destination every day. Call Flight Center now on 131 600. It's Truscott Hi-Fi's first birthday sale. 41st birthday sale, that is, and the prices will blow you away. Like this Pioneer 300 watt Dolby ProLogic sound system, only $799. This RCA 68 centimeter stereo TV with Teletext, just $899. This Panasonic forehead VCR, $50 off. And this Yamaha DVD player, $50 off. Birthday prices to blow you away from Truscott Hi-Fi. Adelaide's lowest prices with up to 24 months interest-free terms. Guess the ultimate in cooking control. OK, listeners, we got big news. Call now and get Foxtel installed for half price. Yes, half price. What are you waiting for? Foxtel Connection has dropped to half price only in October. So call 131 now. Tuesday, 9.30 after All Saints, you'll meet all the sinners. And very soon you'll be caring for people you'd never believe you would. The new series, Bad Girls, Tuesday, 9.30 on 7. Well, what about that? I'm sure you'll agree it was worth waiting up to watch Australia defeating Ireland 55-47 by eight points, coming from behind, six points behind at three-quarter time. Let's go back now and revisit some of the highlights of the second half. Well, certainly Ireland at this stage in the third quarter looked to have the edge on the Aussies, but uh, Australia started to tighten up and just use the ball a little bit better. And uh, it was the move of Lepic up forward and, and certainly uh, started, some of the way they started to just control the ball a bit better. James Hurd here putting one through his first and only over of the match, which uh, resulted in three points. And Australia just started to look a bit more competitive towards the end of the third quarter. They locked it in. The cloud just started to get a bit of the use of the ball. And it was Justin Lepic who was up forward, put through three overs in that third quarter. And he got to Australia within six, just towards the end of the third quarter. And that, in fact, was the margin at three-quarter time. And here we see Lepic again taking another mark, unmanned at that stage, and putting it through for another over. So Australia getting very close within three at that stage. Brian Steins, brother of Jim, able to uh, just get one back for Ireland from a great angle just before three-quarter time. So the score at three-quarter time was 40 to 34. Into the last quarter, and the move of Blake Carousella, who uh, was, uh, did a few things early, but uh, then was fairly quiet. And his last quarter was sensational. You see him here kicking two goals within a minute. And at this stage, Australia getting within uh, a couple, but Garrity able to get uh, another over back for Ireland. At this stage, Ireland perhaps just looking to have the edge, certainly in skill, but Australia had the running and they had the fitness, as we heard our commentators say. Rotated their bench all the way through the match. And here's Blake Carousella again. He ended up with 14 points and uh, four overs for the match. And Justin Lepic, who was the highest point scorer, this for his 18th point of the match. And Australia in front, and Brent Harvey it was, who sealed the match. So here we see Brent Harvey and putting it through for an over and Australia wasn't going to be beaten after that. So there's the final score. No goals, no six pointers for Australia, but 14 overs, 13 behinds and 55, as I said, Lepic 18, Carousella 14, the highest point scorers. One goal for Ireland, 11 overs, eight behinds, 47 points. And in the end, uh, they probably didn't use the ball as well as they did early in the match, and that probably cost them in the end. So Australia getting home by eight points. We'll take a break and come back with more from Croke Park.
you swore to serve. But who'll risk their life for you? Steve, no! You swore to protect. Put the gun down. Who do you trust to save you? The men and women of City Central. Everyday people helping each other survive one hell of a job. City Central, the most rewarding police drama since the bill. Premieres Wednesday on 7 after Blue Healers. Simpson, like the people at Keith Bowden. Simpson top load encore enduro and a spree heavy duty washers are built tough yet they're gentle on your clothes. Come back for interest free terms on Simpson heavy duty washers. I'll be back. You'll always buy Simpson better at Bowden's. Keith Bowden Electrical. South Road St Mary. out for a snow day. Hi, Hal. Hey, look out. And anything can happen. Principal Weaver, catch! It's as unpredictable as the weather. Snow day. I'm going to ask my friends to give me just a little push. I said a little one. Oh! Now showing at cinemas everywhere. How many people did you have under you? I see you have a firm grasp of figures. Mm. Bacardi Breezer, now available in lemon, orange and watermelon. This parkland is now landfill. It's to handle the 18 million tonnes of rubbish we bury every year. But you can make a difference. As a consumer, use less bags, reuse and recycle. As a business, look at the packaging your suppliers use and staff habits. And join RAPPA, the Waste Reduction Accreditation Program. Because with RAPPA and your help, we can stop waste wasting our country. To get involved in RAPPA, call Clean Up Australia on 1800 024 890. Telstra Mobile presents John Farmer, Man of the Hour, live. Don't miss the irrepressible John Farmer live in concert. Tickets on sale now. I just want them clean. Finish. Double action tablets. With enzymes. So easy. Detergent like it should be. I'm sold. Wow, look at this dish. Finish tablets. Unbeatable clean first time, every time. Australia defeating Ireland. Fantastic performance in the last quarter. If you've drifted off to sleep and just woken up, you missed a fantastic finish. 14 overs for Australia, 13 behinds and 55 points. And 11, 8 and 47 for Ireland. They did get one six-pointer. Lepich with 18 points. Carousel at 14. And Blumfield, Smith, Brown, Hurd and Harvey all adding unders for Australia. So a great performance by the Aussies to come back. They look outclassed early on in the match, but uh, they did a terrific job. Australia winning 55 to 47. And of course, there's another match. The last match in the series, Ireland and Australia, again from Croke Park. We're expecting a bigger crowd for that one. And I'm sure it'll get plenty of press over there and that'll be a great build up. So join us for the same time next week. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Australia winning by eight points. Good morning. patient determined to take his last breath. No treatment. There is no need for him to die. As the truth unravels. There's some things about him that just don't add up. Get ready for a heart stopper. Tuesday on All Saints. Four ordinary women are about to do something they shouldn't. They will become the country's most wanted. wanted. Okay, three, three times, and we are off the murder. Daylight Robbery premieres Friday.
Good morning.